And, and we, we are live. Are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast, man. We are here with Marco, a.k.a. The Saint, Saint the Center, Center. man. Um, we're going to get right into it, man. Yep. Real quick, guys. Rumble.com slash Fresh Fit. We got the sign back, as you guys know. Um, and I brought the table in a little bit. I know that you guys said, hey, make it a little bit of a tighter shot for the main angle. So hopefully you guys like this one better. Look at that view, man. Yeah, man. And uh, we're trying to. And it's cold in here, guys, which is why it's a little blurry like that. <laughs> it's, it's you know, I keep the AC up because the cameras. But um, also, guys, CastleClub.tv. We're live on Rumble, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, all the platforms, man. So Twitter. make sure to watch us on YouTube and or Rumble predominantly. Like the video. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, man, without further ado, we got a special guest in the house. You've been here plenty of times. It's been yeah. a while. Happy to have you back, man. Yes. We got the Santa Center in the house. Down the Monko, Monko, so we know who you are, um, but the audience might not. Can you introduce yourself to the people, please? Flex Luther, <laughs> the idol of James Bond, Marquette Devon Burton. I'm the happiest man in the world, background in technology, uh, education, University of California, Berkeley, Johns Hopkins University. Um, at this point, I've had my hands in a number of businesses, uh, started off in a software, moved into hardware as well, um, created a number of consumer technologies, but I started in B2B, which I don't recommend. Uh, it's a tough game. And now I got a couple different businesses, consulting and spend most of my time traveling, enjoying YouTube, building community and... Uh, that's about it. I remember we were in Vegas for an event. Marquette hit us up, took his day off just for us, man. Showed us around. Yes. So thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Absolutely. That was much Absolutely. love to you yes. in Vegas. Shout out to you, man. And you know what? We're established in St. City, so we want to make sure that when dignitaries such as yourselves <laughs> come through, uh, we give you a warm welcome. And, you know, the reason that I do YouTube is for me, it's how I can make a positive influence on culture global culture and you guys right now as i'm sure you know you guys have reach around the world and you guys are today's celebrity but you're also today's culture creator today's political leader and you affect how young people think so you know i'm getting in that mix too and that's kind of always been in my heart now that i'm in a, a strong position financially i'm enjoying having the the freedom to do this yeah and you know it's interesting because people call you a youtuber and i'm like He's not a YouTuber at all. Um, like, uh, you know, you were vastly successful way before YouTube, and it's kind of something that you do to give back to the people. Can you take us back to, like, your upbringing and what led you to become the man that you are today? Sure. Uh, so I was born in San Diego, raised in Los Angeles. Um, went to pretty crummy schools. I actually found out, I later joined Teach for America, and I found out that the schools I actually went to had Teach for America teachers, which is really cool when you see things come full circle. Uh, you realize what it is to give back. But anyways, went to crummy schools, uh, born to a mother on crack cocaine, a father in prison for selling crack cocaine. You know, obvious how they met. But uh, I was basically a, a screw up and a criminal in high school. I ended up testing out of high school at age 16, went to the University of California, Berkeley, completed a four-year degree in three years, uh, took a master's What's your major at, in, at, at uh, Cal? Political science. Political science. Okay. Which I don't recommend. Okay. It's and a total the, waste. That's the, that's the Bears, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, that's the right. Bears. That's the Bears. Golden okay. Bears. Yeah. Yeah. Took a master's at Johns Hopkins. Um uh, did that full time while teaching full time, Teach for America in Baltimore City. Uh, also founded a nonprofit at that time. And then after that, went into my first tech job. Uh, did that for a little bit and then created my first tech company. And first one was no good because I didn't understand uh, revenue models. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of like my practice. Second one, I was able to make it take off. And you know, while I had the second one taking off, it was a, a investor backed company. I founded another company at the same time. And at that time, I was creating offices throughout the United States, created one in South Korea, created another office in uh, Puerto Rico, was doing a deal in China. But when I moved to South Korea, I'd created that second company. And this is, was this your third business now at this point? It was my what, the fourth. The first one failed, second one? Yeah. Okay. So. First failed, second one took a long time, maybe took about three years to become a real thing. And what was the first business? <laughs> I think the people really yeah, like, yeah. learn from this. Yeah, yeah. you know, the first one's at this stage is almost embarrassing, but it was called Hobby Buddy. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that you could look at a map and you could list an activity and someone could join you and do whatever activity you like, whether it's golfing, pick up basketball, going to the gym, salsa dancing, just someone to join in on this activity that you like that you need someone else to When did do you release with. this one? Man, that was in like, I think it was like 22, 23 Okay, so yeah. 2022. No, no, I was 22 uh, oh, no, no, no. or I mean, 23 I'm, I'm sorry, years old. Yeah, I was going to say, but, but what year did you release it? Boy, 
give me a second. So I graduated with my master's in 2011. So I think it was maybe 2012, 2013, something like that. Okay. All right. So, so it was. You have to like, forgive me. I still don't even remember my mother's birthday. No, no, no. I don't good, even know my good. mother's birthday. So. And and, and I, honestly, because I'm thinking here, like, if you release something like this hobby buddy thing, maybe nowadays, it, it probably might pick up some traction because I mean that's a really innovative thing to think back in 20, uh, 2011, 2012, before like the explosion of social media. Correct. And you know what? The other thing is that it's rarely about the idea being terrible. It's more so about you not knowing what you're doing. Mm, gotcha. It was my first tech company. And often people, everyone's like, oh, I have an idea for an app. Oh, fantastic. But do you have an idea for making money on an app? Mm. Oh, okay. And every time people come to me for advice, I say, open up your phone. How many apps do you have on there? 20, 30 apps, 40 apps if you're do you a female. Do you pay for any of them? Do you pay for any of them? Yeah. It's hard to get people to pay for things that they can get for free or that they expect to be free. And so my expertise is on that revenue model side. Gotcha. So the Hobby Buddy one didn't take off. I, great, fantastic it, idea. Like It that's took a, off among yeah. consumers. It never took off among investors. And I didn't have a revenue model. So people were using it, but they weren't paying to use it. Oh. And investors didn't know how they could get their money back if they were to hand me some money. Gotcha. You see okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and then mind you, this is before like things like Twitter were like yeah, creating yeah. a precedence of like, oh, you can have users with no revenue and yeah. it's all good. This is, this was not during that era. Yeah. Right. yeah. This is, the, yeah. So, I mean, it was Twitter even, I think Twitter had just been created. Instagram wasn't around. I think maybe Vine was around was at this point. New. Maybe, maybe new. Vine. Yeah. This is yeah. way back. So, all right. So the first business was, was the hobby buddy one. And then the right. second one you, uh, was, you said it was, what was the second one? It evolved into Fletch. Yeah. And mind you, there's a lot of small projects that are largely irrelevant, but it evolved into Fletch. It started off as a technology called Smarty Pants, which was a terrible name. Eventually figured out how to better market things. We went to the name of Fletch, brought people in on the team, brought in significant investment. And what did this app do specifically? When Smarty Pants first started, it was to create study groups at university. Okay. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, which sounds reasonable but students are broke and colleges usually don't want to pay for anything they're they're under the idea that they don't have a lot of money which is a lie and they're funded the government yes yeah. and the most important thing is that you have to consider path dependency universities don't pay for mobile apps they pay for enterprise software that's usually deployed via web application yes. to their employees not to their students yep unless you're talking about a LMS okay so this was a, like a study group type app. That's how it started. And okay. then it evolved into something totally different. Okay. And how, what, what did it uh, evolve into? So in the process of customer discovery, just trying my best to sell this thing, I was talking with a president of a university in Missouri mm -hmm. and you know, I was trying to sell him, which is a bad thing to do. <laughs> then eventually he tells me what his problem is, which is what I really should have tried to, tried to figure out straight away. And, and remember when you're doing B2B, there's only really two ways to sell to a business. Number one is I can increase your revenue by doing this for you, or I can save you money by doing this for you. And if you're talking about uh, entities that interact with government, you should be saying, hey, I can help you meet this regulation that you have to abide by as well. That's kind of the third piece. Yeah. He said, hey, Marquette, our biggest issue is that the students don't come to school. So they don't show up. So how are they going to join a study group if they don't even come to school? Mm -hmm. And what's worse is we don't know who's not coming to class. So if we could figure that out, that would help a lot. He was actually just kind of venting. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to give me an idea. He was just venting. But I was paying attention. I was listening. And I always remind people that leaders are great listeners. And when he said that, thinking like a hustler, I said, well, how much would you pay for something like that? He says, oh, I'd pay a lot. To get kids in class. Yes. Okay. He said, for two reasons. Reason number one, the kids who don't show up are the ones that fail. And the ones that fail or are not counted as a student because they didn't show up enough times, we can't get paid from federal financial aid if they're not documented oh. as a student. We're not re meeting Title IX or Title X, Y, and Z FAFSA requirements. requirements. Yeah, that Precisely. Yeah. So if FAFSA gave us this amount of money, we have to be able to document that those students attended and the way we currently do it mm -hmm. is by showing that they took a midterm examination or they took X, Y, and Z exam, not by true attendance. So if we were ever audited, we'd be in bad shape. And also a kid might've actually attended 
forty percent of the class, which is enough for us to get funding, but they didn't come for the midterm, and so we got our funding taken away because we use that as a proxy Hold on. for I, attendance. I, I literally just had an epiphany moment. So, are you telling me that universities use the process of midterms and final exams not necessarily to test your competence, rather a way for them to ensure attendance for funding? Both. Wow. Both. Clever. Wow. Like, bro, that literally, I'm just like in the back of my mind, like, what yeah. the hell? Like, I'm over here like, oh, do they really care about our competency and give you a midterm or a final? No. But it's really, <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I never thought about it from that angle of attendance, to, sh to prove attendance, which then mm -hmm. and there would give them the ability to request and or continue to get funding from the government. Yeah, and even if the student was taking private loans, I mean, a student is worth, what, $30,000? Yeah. Right? That's a lot of money. private and public schools. Yeah, that and the this. public school, uh, private schools are worth a lot more. Okay. And so that's why when we did our first big deal, we did it with DeVry, which is an enormous... Oh, DeVry? Yeah. And DeVry owns Carrington. They own nursing schools. They own a whole bunch of other colleges, mostly on the professional degree certificate side of things. The trade side. Precisely. Um, but those, those, that's, that's a lot of business. Wow. So our first big deal we did with DeVry. Okay. And that was to, so you shifted from helping create study groups to ensuring kids go to school. We didn't even need to ensure class. that they went to school. We just needed to be able to document attendance. And then from there, the school could use the existing resources because here was the issue. So you have the head of student retention, right? Mm -hmm. His job is to make sure that the students come to school, that they continue attending, they're achieving, whatever the case is. He doesn't know who's absent. So what we're able to do is say, hey, here's 100,000 students enrolled at fill in the blank enormous state college. Yeah. Uh, here are the students who haven't attended the first three days. Here are the students that haven't done this. And so we're giving them accurate, rich data that's real time. Mm -hmm. So the technology, once we finally perfected it, it consisted of a hardware component, which obviously was running firmware. It consisted of an Android iPhone app. We eventually ran it on iPads as well. Web application with data analytics for the college and then obviously back in for us. And so we were giving real time. We could tell you literally right now, if there's classes going on, we could tell you Myron came to class 10 minutes late. He's currently there he went on a five minute bathroom break he's now back in the class and wow. so we could give you very rich real-time data okay and they use that to manage you know whatever they needed now let me ask you this do the universities care so much that kids because i remember when i was in college a lot of kids want to show up to class they would just show up for the finals the right. midterms and take the right um do the universities actually care that much about kids showing up to class or is it that if they don't show up to class they're not going to be in a position to take the midterm which would then actually be reported Universities care about the students paying their tuition. Okay. So whatever adds up to the student paying the tuition is what they care about. So is it that kids that don't attend class are less likely to continue on and go another semester? And uh, Correct. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, because that is a, okay. So yeah. lack of attendance in class would then probably mean that they drop out. Precisely. And our tagline was showing up is half the battle. Okay. Which is factual. It is very clear the students who don't show up are the ones who fail. And you often hear people in popular culture say things like, oh, I only, I never went to class. I used to only show up or they're lying. The data indicates that the kids who don't go to class are the ones who fail out. This might be different at some of your higher tier universities, but for the most part, the data is overwhelmingly clear. If you do not attend, you're going to fail out of college. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Inter yeah. Yeah. I, I never, I never thought about that. So, so you, so, so right there and then having this talk with that Missouri university president, that's when you kind of shifted gears and you're like, all right, we need to find a way to keep kids in, in the university enrolled. Not even to keep them enrolled or, or me, not even to keep them enrolled, not to make them show up our simple job. And one of the important things about being successful with a product-based business is simplicity and understanding what your customer actually needs. Mm. Versus what you're trying to sell. What he needed from us was to be able to know precisely who was not attending class and have accurate attendance records. Okay. That's what, that's what they wanted to pay for. What's the magic number where if they you know, didn't show up for this percentage of classes, it was almost always guaranteed they wouldn't. I, I might be trying sure. to jog your memory here. Yeah, too much, yeah, yeah. But Frankly, I haven't gone through the data in a while. I want to say there were two rules that we established. I actually wrote a white paper on this stuff. Okay. Like I, I was really deep into it at the time. I yeah. wrote a white paper on it, but there were two rule, two golden rules. Uh, one of them is like if they miss the first three days, 
they're done. Oh. And the other one is once they exceed 20, per, uh, having not attended 20% of the class, they're done. Okay. Yeah. So anything less than 80% attendance is typically, they're not going to stick around. They're not going to. And they're going to fill out. And so we were the earliest alert that you could possibly give the college for figuring out who they need to talk to. So since they have this data, would, I guess, would, did it put them in a position where they were able to kind of like mitigate the risk and be like, hey, asshole, we know you haven't shown up to class. Correct. Sending emails, maybe having someone check up on their dorm or something like that. I don't know. That's right. And the college has all the resources to do that. They just yeah. didn't know where to target the resources. Damn. So that was pretty neat. And then the other piece about it that was uh, really profitable for the colleges is like they were seeing that not only were they able to keep the kids in college so that they can get their guaranteed state funding or government funding. But also the kids are now persisting. So you're going to get greater lifetime value out of the customer, which is to say that they're going to pay you more tuition over time because they're not dropping out. There's a program at most colleges called first year retention. Yeah. So if you can get, get the kid past the first year, yeah. generally you got a shot at keeping them for six years, even though it's a four year degree. Most kids in America are taking six years. Wow. So you're locking in revenue. Wow, man. That's that's really cool that you created software to do that. So how much, how much did they pay for that? Like, how much did they pay for it? It depended on the scale of the cost. Like, for example, with DeVry, they pay $5 per student. Okay. They have a tremendous number of students, so it works out really well. We had deals with smaller colleges that paid $15 per student or $23 per student. Mm. And then we had a deal with a college in Virginia where we actually had our technology come pre-installed on, on their iPads. And so we're able to charge them additional service fees for pre-installing. So there was a lot. And then also we had a hardware component, as I mentioned. So they also had to pay for the hardware component, which we were able to mark up. Initially, we had a partnership with a company called Estimo. Actually, I shouldn't even say it because I shouldn't, I'm not going to give them any promo. Okay. Um, but we had a partnership with these guys. And when we started doing significant volume, like, hey, I need 100,000 I was going to say, units. how did you scale up? That was my next question. Yeah, I need 100,000. Dude named Alex, he was the CEO of their company. We, we used to be on great terms. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll get it to you. So we got deals going through. We're, we're pumping out deals. Revenue's coming in. And I'm like, hey, man, like the, those units didn't come in because we have to program them. You know, he sends them in. We have to program the firmware. Okay. So yeah. they give you the actual hard devices. The physical device. You guys program we it. We got to program Then them. you guys go ahead and deliver it to the Deploy university. Deploy them to the university. Yeah. And so they're going into Holy my God. Erie, Pennsylvania office. And so we have a whole big process. And, you know, when you cause a supply chain issue like that, it's going to cause some reverberations. Yep. So then I said, okay. And it was very stressful at the time because, you know, we got six figure deals and they're breaking our supply chain and lying about it. like, oh, don't worry. It'll be there in a week type Not stuff. Only that, you're, I mean, let, let's also add in that tight timelines. School starts, most universities start in August and or September. Right. So they probably want the software by damn near July, if not sooner, probably. Right. When we're dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, nursing programs and things that are running year round, oh. <laughs> yeah, we're dealing with, we were really, yeah. yeah, it was going into high gear. It was exciting. Um, and so it was a major business problem. And what was exciting for me at the time, it was angry and it was depressing because I'd worked so hard and we were finally yeah. winning. You know, we finally had volume. So I was able to make a contact in China and uh, get our own device designed and produced. We had two different devices. One we called the Dot. It was really small. And another one was more long range. So you range. said, fuck Alex, you outsourced it to the yeah. Chinese. We, we didn't outsource it. it. We, we partnered. Uh, we had our own factory. We produced our own devices, did our own. And then we were able to program the device in the factory. Nice. So, yeah, we improved oh. process tremendously. And from the factory, we were able to ship it direct to the school and then just meet them at the school and put them up ourselves. Or if the school wanted to save money, everything was pre-programmed. All they had to do was stick it on the wall and press a button to turn it on. Question for you. Why the decision to move it to China versus, mm -hmm. I mean, I, there might be obvious ones like maybe cutting costs or whatever mm -hmm. maybe. But like what, what led to the decision to like, okay, we're going to start manufacturing, getting everything ready to go in China versus using, I mean, that guy was unreliable. So I see yeah, why you didn't No, we him. actually, and that, they were in Eastern Europe. So oh, that, okay. that firm was in right, Eastern Europe. Too. Okay. Yeah, precisely. That firm was in Eastern Europe. It was an American company. The CEO was Eastern European living in America and they were manufacturing in Eastern Europe. Okay. We actually did try to manufacture in the United States because at, at this point I had offices throughout the U.S. and one in Erie, Pennsylvania, which is, you know, they have a decent manufacturing base there. And we actually did try to do it. It was just A, too expensive and B, you didn't have all of the know-how and the materials to get it done in America. Mm. And th this is common across industries unfortunately and this is just a result of essentially bad government yeah um and, and we could talk about that later if people are interested Definitely but will. anyways um because there's so many components to the hardware piece you know it, it's essentially a ble uh you know what's blue, a BLE? bluetooth device we'll just say simply okay uh it's a bluetooth beacon 
Uh, and so there's a number of like silicon materials and, and casings and things that allow you to make it very small. And then there's a certain battery that allows it to last for like three to five years. Was chip production another reason why you decided to go through China? Because Taiwan is right there? No. Nah, no? Nah, okay. nah, no. Nah, it, it was really the being able to do all of the components in one place. And, and I'll give you a note on why they're able to do it all in one place. Whereas in the States, we'd have to have like, okay, these people are de- doing the chip part. These oh, people are doing the casing. Yeah. And and then, you know, it was just a mess. Too many hands in the cookie jar, which limits your efficiency and the ability to get the product out quickly to the universities. And it's expensive. Bam. Yeah. That's a um, and eventually when I got a deal set up with China, essentially the government, and they introduced us to a number of investors, which in China is still the government, even though they pretend as though it's not the government. <laughs> um, they loved the fact that we already had our factory there and we already had so many relationships. And the, the they have the Belt and Road Initiative, which in my opinion is their effort to take over the world. But they're trying to bring all of the most innovative technologists, high growth companies into China. And so they took myself and a number of entrepreneurs from around the world who had high growth companies. And they said, Hey, this city is dedicated to, um, uh, electric cars. This whole city we've built is all about electric cars. This whole city is all about artificial intelligence. This whole city is all about fill in the blank technology. And, uh, Hey, check out this, this model we've made of the city. Here's where we're standing. And here's the building that we're constructing and let us know what you want in there. We can put your office. We can put a gym. We can put apartments, whatever you want. Let us know. We'll lay it out how you want. We, all we need is that you stay here for at least six months a year to run your business out of China. Oh, wow. And we promise there will be no intellectual property theft. We're going to take care of you in any way, whatever you want. And the budget's like kind of limitless. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Here's our, our AR VR city. It was ridiculous, but it was, let me ask you this, man. Um, how far ahead, if they, if they are, is mm-hmm. China to the United States when it comes to tech and production and just being able to get shit done, you know, without all the hoopla like here in the States? Listen, I have a, a lot of connections in government. Now, I used to be in government. You used to be in government. Yeah. I think Americans are overly optimistic, especially those in government. I think they overestimate our hand. And... I remember my second trip to China. First, I went to Beijing. First time ever, I went to Beijing on holiday, myself and my assistant. You know, it, it was cool. Then I went as a guest of the Chinese government when we were doing that business deal. They took me on a tour of a bunch of cities. And every city I went to, like, of course, we went to Shanghai, huge mega cities. We went to their small cities, which were bigger than our big cities. And they were sparkling clean, brand new, high tech. And I will never forget, we were at a train station and I thought it was an airport because it was massive. Wow. And we got on the train and the train, zoom! you can't even take a nap. It, it's so fast. <laughs> yeah. you, you're already there. Hundreds of miles per hour? Dude. Like in Japan with the bullet trains? And everything was first class there. Mm. I knew that we couldn't beat them. Because everything's first class, everything's enormous, they have tremendous population, they're hardworking and focused, um, and they're importing all of the intellectual capital from around the world. Here's what America does. We let other countries flush their toilets on us, right? We get immigration, we get the poor and the sick and the tired from other countries. China's not letting you in unless you're paying extra money to be a student at their universities Mm -hmm. or they have specifically recruited you because you are the cream of the intellectual crop. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not getting in there. You don't find a bunch of tourists just strolling through casually. You don't find a bunch of expats living in China. No, you might find some people teaching English, but that's about it. Beyond that, they're skimming off the top of every other country. Yeah, their entire culture is based off of efficiency. Yeah. Being efficient. Yeah. And, and that's not going to happen. Then. I, I, and, I, and the reason why I wanted to go into this was because I remember the first time we interviewed you, you spoke about how, you know, you were getting like, you know, really good treatment in China. Yeah. And I knew off rip, way. if they're treating you well as an American in China, you're a fucking somebody. Yeah. Uh, because if people don't, you know, may or may not know, it, guys, China's a rival, okay? So is yeah. Russia, etc. So if you're able to go to these countries and you're treated well, you're probably bringing something to the table. Um, so so, so they, they basically wanted you to run your business out of their country and 
and you, they basically secured no intellectual property theft, which I thought I think is very interesting because China is like one of the number one places for I, IPR. I saw theft. fake real Rolls Royce. I kid you not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. China is the best yeah. at bootlegging yeah. everything. It's amazing. Yeah, in the airport they're selling fake iPhones. It's Disgusting, ridiculous, bro. Yeah, yeah. fake Rolls Royce. Yeah, no, I, bro. <laughs> bro. Bro. China is the biggest <laughs> thief of American intellectual property <laughs> in the world. Uh, uh, when I worked for HSI, um, every time we did like, because we used to investigate IPR, intellectual property theft, which is guys basically stealing stuff that's trademarked, you know, brands, right? They steal yep. Louis Vuitton, whatever. Um, all the fake stuff, all the counterfeit stuff, most of it almost always came out of China. Absolutely. All of it. I have Absolutely. a question. What is an NFT? You know what? I still have never figured that out. But I tell you, if you want to learn, you can go to the Sassin.com <laughs> conference two. You can actually check it out and learn everything about NFTs, including how to make an NFT. The screaming in the chat was NFT. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah, apparently some dude with destiny. Uh, conference two. Check it out. You'll learn. Do you, do you, I need to buy it as well. I need to buy conference <laughs> two so I can figure it out. Speaking of which, uh, NFTs have went down like what? 90%? Bro, board A, in, all these big NFTs are done, bro. bro. Yeah. Done. Man. Which... I've always said, mm. because similar to cryptocurrency, which is traded as though it's like some sort of commodity, mm. there's not an underlying asset. It was like a tulip mania. You guys heard of tulip mania? Mm -mm. Who's your guy who Googles stuff? Oh, <laughs> Mom, 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 can you uh, yeah. fact check something real quick? Yeah, for so, so it was just tulip mania, which tulip is to mania? say okay. it's essentially a fad and people are trying to get rich quick. Mm. You know, people tend to not want to work and they're like, oh, I could make a quick return on something without Crypto. doing much. I'll do it. And cryptocurrency was not meant to be traded as an asset, right? Mm. It was meant to be a a private way to trade with other persons mm. currency is it big in china or not really uh or was it big at that, that listen, time listen china is every government is about control mm. uh, but china does not pretend to not be about control oh. so you will never be confused on the position of the chinese government on cryptocurrency or much else and, and they protect their their own industries like for example and south korea does this too but uber failed in china Damn. uber doesn't really fail does it but but it failed in china so that's because china made it fail they were not going to let it succeed there mm. so that's an important thing to understand if you want to do business in china you, you don't just go in there as a gung-ho capitalist you go in there underneath the communist party and they will let you operate yeah they'll let you you know it's funny yes. uh they changed the bible text for their um, communities, like they changed the actual word in the Bible, and it's because it was more efficient to have them believe a certain narrative towards Jesus. That's crazy, bro. And they're anti-religious because yeah. they're communists, right? And yeah. they had issues with the Uyghurs, which is a Muslim minority. You know, it, it's China, mm -hmm. but that's crazy, bro. Um, we could hit some of these some chats, uh, chats yeah. real quick. I uh, hope you guys are joining the discussion, man. We got a lot more to talk about. Um, you know, uh, uh, what else? Like, uh, we're hit some geopolitics as well. We're going to talk about uh, more about Smart um, guy here. the app. Yeah. Um, okay, Fresh, can you read that one? FBA donated 10 bucks says, Fresh, you're going to let this guy out fresh you? Listen, bro, <laughs> Marquette is on a different level, man. He's on his business swagger. He's that guy, so shout out to him, man. Always looking fresh. I appreciate that. Uh, Eldon, uh, what we got here? Winston says, I asked Super Chat Marquette before, but he didn't answer. So I'll ask again, oh. what's the definition of a fascist or fascism? Where is he? He wants to know. What's the definition of fascism? Oh, fascism. Yeah, fascism. Ah, okay. So he said he asked me that before? Like when I was on your show? Or on my show, is he talking Might about? Might have been your show, maybe. I don't ah, know. Ah, okay. Or, I don't know. Yeah, sure. So this is the best way to understand fascism. Uh, fascism is a term that's often used almost colloquially just to describe a regime that you don't like, mm. an author authoritarian regime that you don't like. But paradigmatic fascism is that which was practiced by the Italians. The chief philosopher of fascism was a gentleman by name of Giovanni Gentile. And you can read about fascism and the ideology in detail by looking at Dr. A. James Greger, who is the foremost scholar. But in short, fascism was the authoritarian effort of the Italian government to get their spot in the sun. And Nazism, which is often called fascist, uh, modeled itself after fascism, but it is in fact not fascist. And fascism is not a racist ideology. Well said. Okay, we have a next, uh, Quandilus List says, um, this is a bunch of money in my country, but we're celebrating tonight. 
Just got hired by Justin Waller for short form content. W. Wow. You have any advice except for working my ass off? Um, okay, so he's hired by Justin for short form content. I mean, that's a W in itself, bro. I mean, honestly, I would just say make sure you're doing edits on time. Make sure you're having things maybe pre-made. The moment he drops content, have it ready to go. And I'd say you're off to a good start, bro. That's pretty good. Justin's a really good dude. So, um, Okay, we have next. Uh, Fed just says, shit, I forgot the, to change the name. It ain't Quan Dallas Lifts. It's Fed Jet, motherfucker. Remember that name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of random, but. All right. Ghost says, peace to the Saints. Peace to the Got Saints. Got a constellation. And the Saint helped me out greatly in my product based business. Assassins or nothing. Consultation, I'm thinking he probably means. Yeah, I'm thinking about that as well. Julian Blame says, fresh and Myron. Thanks for having Tim Cast the other day. Men need to wake up. Daily content is where the numbers are for you guys, but men need more Timcast IRL and similar creators. We need to get ready. Difficult times ahead. If you know, you know. God bless. Well yeah. said, bro. Shout um, out to your acronym game. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> new, new age <laughs> yeah. acronyms. Uh, oh, Julian Blame goes, Fresh Amar, thanks for having Tim Cast. Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, oh then, yeah. We, where are we at here? Oh, Othon. He goes, um, finally, the, 10 bucks, finally the big homie back on the show. By far the best and realest guest you've had on. Respect God. Bless y'all. Myron tells Erica, chill with Marquette and MLD Rose was wild. <laughs> we okay. have, what's going are on they with, trying to pull with, uh, out the super villain? What's going on with, Zer- with Zerka? Freshly snipes Flex Luther. <laughs> no, nah, there's nothing going on. The mm. only thing was he had mentioned my name, and I, I was curious. I was like, wow, I've never mentioned your name. Uh, who are you? But if you are going to mention my name, like, make sure we're we're the same caliber of person. <laughs> you hear me? Like, like he's he lives in Miami, right? Yeah. Well, like, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he lives in Miami. I'm in Miami right now, right? Mm. I say anything and I'll do anything. You see what I'm saying? You think he would box you? He would never box me, but. I, and I offered to box him, actually. Hmm. I offered to box him. I tagged him on my community ta- uh, forum. I said, hey, let, let's throw these hands. But to be honest with you, I usually only box people I respect. So you want to box him? You see what I'm saying? Okay. He's not on your level. But I'm in Miami, and anyone who has an actual issue, you run your mouth at me, you know where I'm at, right? Oh yeah, I guess, especially now. I guess. Well, yeah. maybe not yet because we haven't doxed ourselves. Thank God. So I'm just but, saying, uh, like, <laughs> I, I haven't brought anybody's name up. Like, don't bring my name up talking disrespectfully. I like that. Okay. Um, he brought you up. I didn't even know he did. Right. That's why I was. I was like, what's that about? Uh, maybe it was like a tweet. Know. Maybe I was okay. like, I don't. I don't know you, kid. I'll, uh, I'll break your fake teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not aware of uh, what's in real life. Here. Um, we the people goes uh, question for F and F y'all say it's hard for Chris to get girls on a pod because of reputation and the time but yeah y'all letting Zerka making his jobs harder by letting him disrespect the girls literally for no reason and he's there to show so unprofessional alright man I mean like I said before he's not on every single time I guess some of y'all <laughs> love Zerka some of y'all dislike Zerka that's fine um, but you know like I said we try to keep the show diverse and different you're um, not gonna let everybody bro you're not gonna like every single guest right. on bro right. like I mean a bunch of you guys were talking smack about you know Saying the center coming on, like we rock with him, and that's what matters. And a lot of people get value from it. I think we're having a great conversation here, but people are gonna hate, man. It is what right. it is, and that's one thing I've kind of realized is that, like, no matter how good your content is, someone is gonna find something to complain you about or cry about. You can't please everyone. It's crazy. Everyone bro. That's not right. Feasible. Yeah, you, you just can't. And, and also, happy people usually are not going around catching biff, even with like the kid Zerka. You know what annoyed me is like, buddy. I, I've never mentioned your name. Like, well, why you just throw shots at me? Like, I, I'm gonna I make never... peace between y'all, man. What's that? There, I'm gonna make peace between yeah. y'all. There's no need for for his good. Yeah, because I'm I, he's he pretends to be a savage. Like I'm I'm with the shits, and so that's why it bothers me. It's like, bro, like don't mention my name, little buddy. Like I never mentioned you. People even ask me about him because mm. people know if they ask me, I'm gonna say what's real and I'm gonna stand on it. And people like I guess perceive him as like a big bad guy, like because he's like very like extra. And when they asked me about him, I was like, I don't know the guy. Like, he seems entertaining. And then he, he brought me up, and I was like, ah, that, that's strange. He's a good guy, man. Sometimes yeah. it, he just gets misinterpreted uh, because of uh, his antics. But I, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a. He's I'm a, an entertainer. Yeah, though. I'm going I'm to I'm fix this between yeah, you, I man. Think, cause he's an entertainer. I think there, some YouTubers need to get punched in the face, man. Uh, and you guys I think you guys could probably collab and do something. Zerka's like content, he's like real life. Yeah. That's two different like, lanes. So I, I'm going to bring peace here. Uh, okay, what do we got here? We got um, 
None of the above, right? Okay. 50 bucks shout out to the big homie, the real life super villain, the drip goblin, Mr. Fleece Freeze, Flex Luther. Okay. Yeti. Uh, Who gave Car- me that name, Flex Luther? Freshly Snipes. <laughs> Freshly Snipes out here, man. Okay. Uh, Cardi goes, uh, yo, anyone else notice how happy these three are? I wonder what's the common denominator. Anyways, what's the highest ROI skill anyone can learn? I pr- personally think it's the skill of going viral consistently. Um, I would say in a diff- different way, marketing. Because uh, nowadays, it's all about who's being seen, who's being heard. Because right now, so many creators doing yes. podcasts, doing content, but no one knows you. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Yeah. You can't market. Yeah. yeah. It's simple. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, we got uh, Marquise Whitley goes, uh, Peace <laughs> to the Saints, there are companies such as Douyin, the Chinese TikTok and TikTok. TikTok uh, is it possible to have an American social network plat- networking platform in China? Wow. No. Nope. Hell no. no, right? They won't allow it. <laughs> Listen, here's, a, here's how foolish nope. the American government is. Mm-hmm. Now, I used to live in uh, South Korea, which is a, an ally of the American government. The, yeah. We have soldiers that have been there forever. We created South Korea in a literal sense. Yeah. Um, and we've had a lot of technology transfer. We'd helped them out in many ways. Yeah. Yet they still steal our intellectual property, just like mm-hmm. China. Mm-hmm. And they don't allow us to implant certain technologies in there. They won't have Google. They're going to have Naver instead, which is basically a, a copy of Google. They won't have uh, certain you know communication platforms. They're going to have Kakao, which is basically them putting their skin on top of it. And that's South Korea, which is our major ally. That's like our child. We created them. It's our military base. Yeah. So if South Korea slaps us in the face like that, you better believe that China, China. will never allow something like that. And one thing you guys got to remember, technologies are basically platforms that hold a lot of data. And data is information. And when you have information on individuals, you can utilize this information for blackmail, for intelligence pr- uh, purposes, for recruiting agents, like for not, like there's so many things that can be done with this and China would not embrace that kind of a security risk. And it's ironic, I was just in India, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe like 13 days ago, I was in India. Which hopefully I never have to go back to India. But <laughs> I was in like India, it? and you cannot use TikTok in India. Mm. So if the Indians are smart enough to say we will not allow TikTok, they're part of BRICS, right? China's yep. a part of BRICS, yeah. India's yeah. part of BRICS. Yeah, I was going to okay. say they're allies, aren't they? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> but right, yeah, you would think. <laughs> yeah. So India won't allow TikTok, but America allows TikTok. I wonder why. Right, and that's how rotten we are as a as a nation. And I think we're the greatest nation on earth. I really do believe that we have the best people on earth Mm -hmm. and we need our government to reflect that and make better decisions. The best and brightest aren't necessarily represented in the government. Do you remember um, way back in time, there's a country, not a country, but a state called Sodom and Gomorrah. They were very well versed, (laughs) very technology, very Uh advanced. And then uh, they brought everybody in, you know, Mm. the young, the sick, the old, the smart. Mm -hmm. And then over time they became corrupt. And right. then gone like that. So America might be the new Sodom and Gomorrah. Never Damn. know. It's sad. All right. Uh, what else we got here? And yo, I hope you guys are enjoying the updated production quality, man. I was up all night fixing these damn cameras. Yo, so shout let me know out. What it's almost too clean, think, bro. Man. They can see everything. Yeah. Shout <laughs> let out. Let me know uh, what you guys think of the, the new everything cameras and qualities and everything. All the moles and pimples. <laughs> they can see everything, yeah. nigga. Have you seen videos of La Piera PE class in 1962? Why did they stop doing fitness like this? Okay. And guys, from this point forward, I'm going to read the chats, but every uh, we're going to read 20 and up from this point forward because um, I want to make sure that you guys get all this uh, knowledge from Marquette. Uh, Fedja, uh, yo, Mar- Myron, yo, my comment was read by Fresh. Wasted $50. I just hired. <laughs> I got hired by Jay Waller. You got any advice? Love you, Fresh. Um, yo, screw you, bro. <laughs> these guys, bro. I didn't read it bad. Uh Yo, oh my, my biggest thing, bro, is uh, watch all of his latest interviews and have content ready to go from those interviews, okay? And send it to him right away um, and make sure that you're using a lot of the, the jump text. Keep the uh, post uh, very engaging. That's how I was able to grow my TikTok. My guy does it. He does, my TikTok, sorry. My Instagram with Reels. So just make sure it's good. You're, you're making it quickly and you're, uh, you, know, you keep your finger on the pulse of you know any new interviews on. Take the best parts of it, clip it, and have it ready to go. Um, Justin Adder, ten bucks. Peace to the Saints. Steve a P- Stephen a pimp. Okay. Um, Stephen. Stephen a pimp. Oh. Fax Kellerman. Yeah, instead of Stephen A. Smith. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Maga donated ten bucks. Goes. Um, shout out to Marquette. Peace to the Saints. Remember, if you're not getting haters, you ain't important. That's true, man. Mm. That's true. Mm. Um, any anything else? 
And we got Rumble Rats. All right, cool. Uh, I'll fly through these. And guys, if you guys want to get involved in the show, fnfsuperchat.com. You guys got a question. We got uh, you got a very successful entrepreneur here. He's yep. not a YouTuber like you guys think, man. He's a tech um, whiz. You know, I mean, obviously, you guys have just heard a little bit of it as far as like running a business, scaling it up, moving it to a foreign country that would never accept Americans. Yeah. Right. So um, getting chauffeured around that, by Chinese government, you got to be a somebody to be able to do that. That takes skill, dedication, and being that guy. Absolutely. And no. I knew. I just knew when you said that. From my, you know, being involved in law enforcement Government, and, yeah, you, you know, know, dealing with, with China, it, as an American, if you're getting respect in China and they're treating you well, bro, you're doing something right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're adding some kind of ridiculous value where they're able to overlook the fact that you're a citizen of, of a rival nation. Yes. A black citizen of a rival nation. There you nation, go. That's an, right? Yeah, there you go. That, that too, because they're racist over there. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Very. <laughs> and in Asia, they don't give a fuck. Um, I know you don't get along with MLD. I'm going to bring peace between y'all too, not, man. It's not that I don't get along with MLD, man. Um... Again, it, it was a strange situation. Now, did you see the video? I didn't see the the entire interview. It I was just so know that strange. You guys had a falling out after. Now, honestly, it was the strangest thing on earth. Um, <laughs> what was your take on that? I found I found the whole situation to be very peculiar. I was like, was he high? Like, why? Well, I know both of you. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously speaking, you're definitely more. I want to say, of you, how to put this? If I had to compare you and MLD, mm -hmm. I would say you're more of a real life person mm -hmm. he's more of a content creator sure so the level of speech and level of like conversation was different mm -hmm. but to get upset at you mm -hmm. i was like why it just came out i don't know if it was an emotional day but it's like random i don't know what it was but this is what was spooky though because i'm relationships are serious for me yeah meaning that if i rock with somebody i'm gonna fry and die with you yeah period like, we don't have to agree on everything. If we're friends, mm -hmm. we're friends. It's done. MLD had um, DM'd me. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, the initial thing started off, he was on uh, the Valuetainment. Yeah. Uh, some girl came at him crazy. Yeah. And he reacted like a sucker. And at the time, I didn't know him. I, I, I didn't even know who he was. I, I was just. he called her fat. And, and he. She called down. him out for that, and he said he didn't know what he said. Right. Yeah. He acted like he was having, like, <laughs> Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was just saying, like, that's lame. That's lame, man. Like, how do you get scared of a female mm -hmm. in a safe environment? Like, yeah. what is she going to, like, Debo you and sock you out? Yeah. And so I'm just giving commentary on it. Content. Uh, didn't know him personally. You know, and, you know, might have cracked some jokes. I, I can't even remember it. it. It's, like, largely irrelevant. And then he had said some things about me, which, frankly, I... I didn't find him to be like offensive or anything like that. I was like, you know, he took a couple shots, dope. Yeah. And then um, he had a uh, DM me, and uh, he said, "Hey, you know, I know Myron. He says you're a good guy, and I think I was about to do a roast of him. I had listed that I was going to do a roast. Ah. And so the roast is listed. I think at the time I was in Vietnam. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Vietnam. The roast <laughs> is listed already, and he says Myron says you're a good guy. He says, oh, if you mess with Myron. I consider these guys friends, so I'll, we're on the phone. Yeah. I said, I will cancel this roast. Say no more. Marquette, to be, to be fair, Marquette, mm -hmm. if you're going to roast somebody, mm -hmm. they should be scared. Absolutely. I'm just saying, bro. Absolutely. Like, bro, Marquette's breaking them with somebody's life, and their, I want to say, personality can be so... Yo, you're, nigga, you go all the way in, bro. Bruh. You don't hold back. No mercy. None. <laughs> God damn. None. So when he when he... Bang my line. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm friends with Myron. I was like, I consider them friends. Yeah. I have a roast listed. If you would like, I have no problem. I will cancel it right now. I don't care. It's, it's not about revenue. It's I was just gonna I'm gonna enjoy myself a little bit. It's not an issue. I'm gonna yeah. cancel it right now. Yeah. Man to man. And my, my assistant is right there listening to me, right? Yeah. He's like, no, no, go ahead and do it. I was like, dude, I, I, I there's no need. Like, I don't have any smoke with you. I don't need to embarrass you for any <laughs> practical purpose. I'll cancel it. He's like, no, no, no. How about, uh, you know, like, no, like, just go ahead and do it. I was like, well, you know what? Like, I, I don't want to. At that point, it's like, well, well, I don't need to spew vitriol and negativity and put you down. It's like, I was like, why don't you come on? I was like, people will probably find that interesting. Come on, have a conversation. Comes on, have a con has a conversation, and then conversation goes left because he was being a weirdo, and I thought it was strange because the situation would have never occurred if he would have simply just took my kindness, which was, I'll cancel the roast. Which mm -hmm. is what he really wanted was not to be roasted. All he had to say was, all right, yeah, cancel it. Boom. Hang up the phone, cancel the roast. This would never be a thing. But 
That didn't but instead, we had to find out that he looks like a Colombian hooker. The boy didn't got everything done. Why he thought he could mess with the bald head lover, I don't know. <laughs> Frankly, I don't know. Strange. Everybody going to learn the hard way. So to be fair, though, you did record a call. Absolutely. And you know why? So, so, so okay. But man to man, though, if I'm going to sit with somebody and talk, yeah. no recording. He's not my man. You see, now remember the way in which he came to me. At that point, we were on opposite sides of a battlefield. True. And so I don't know you and I don't know your nature. So I must make sure that I'm engaging appropriate strategy. So if I find you to be a friend, then none of it would have had any relevance. It would be immaterial. So, for example, if you called me and you said, hey, Myron's a friend, I say, I mess with Myron. He's a good, he's an honorable man. Mm. So I will assume that you at some level are honorable and I will not do the roast. Yeah. And he says, thank you. I'd appreciate that. Great. Hang up the phone. The recording of the audio would be irrelevant, wouldn't it? But the reason I had to record the audio is because he's a dishonest person. And you know what people do? And I know you guys have experienced this, whether it's from males or females, is he lied about the contents of our conversation. He lied about it. And so when I released the audio, people were like, yo, during the live session, when you were live, you lied and said certain things that weren't true. And Marquette played the audio. And we can clearly see that you are a liar. Had I not had that, we couldn't document that he's a liar. Now, here's the thing. If he would have recorded the conversation with me, mm -hmm. everything I said lined up. Yeah. Why? Because I'm an honest person. I stand on my word, whether you record it or not. I'm the same man in every environment. A business environment, a ghetto, the Waldorf Astoria, Monaco, Dubai, on a stage, off a stage. Mm. So it wouldn't really matter. And if you're in my enemy, die with your dick in the dirt. You heard me? I'm going to bring peace between y'all, man. Yeah. And, and remember, it's, always, it's no always... There's no need for us to be fighting, man, because there's a not. bunch of other idiots out there oh, that really deserve it's to not. get punched in the face. And, and, you know, John is a good guy. Zerk is a good guy. You're a great guy. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're you, like I get along with all y'all, so there's no point for us to be infighting. Right. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a... You know what was common in both cases? What? That they came out to attack me. It was common in both cases. In the Zerka situation, people asked me about them. They tried to, you know, the, the internet, they, they like drama. They try to ignite a beef. They do. As mm -hmm. an honorable man, people are like, oh, what do you think about Zerka? Mm. Well, he seems entertaining. He, yeah. he seems outrageous guy. They I don't know. Beef, man. I, I think that there's other creators that really need to get beat up. Uh, and I think Absolutely. guys on this side of the internet that are helping men out, helping guys get better, right. et cetera, we need to stand united versus... Right. You know, all these other soy boys that are out here, you know, pushing multiple genders, yeah. being weirdos, you and know, and don't play with the super villain. And don't play with the super villain on this side. Because he, he gives zero fucks. See, I don't play with the super I villain. I almost want to say, let's come together, but I don't I just notice jealousy and envy, mm -hmm. and that never goes away. So ultimately it sounds good, but we will never all be the same, bro. I, it, it, some people got to lay down. Yeah. yeah some people yeah, got to lay down. Have to. You know? Yeah. Like, and here's the thing. Sad, like, when, but rally. With MLD, I tried to be peaceful and cordial. Like, I said, hey, I'll end the, I won't do the live. He didn't yeah. want to accept that. Then he comes on and acts like a brat. I was like, goodness. Now, Zerk, I've never interacted with him. He could be a reasonable person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I surmise that his internet thing is a persona. He could, behind that, be a reasonable He's person. He's a really cool guy. Yeah. And so is John, man. Like. Yeah. Bro, uh, and here's the funny part. Who's it's John? You talking about BBMLD? Yeah, uh, BBMLD. <laughs> because because the thing is that you guys, because uh, I know all y'all, like uh -huh. you guys all have, we all have like the same mindset. So it's like, yeah. bro, you guys would get along if it was under different circumstances. Right. Yeah, MLD is a great so, guy though. Yeah, he, he's he a good is. dude, man. I, 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 in that scenario, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe things were kind of like scary for him, but. Other than that, he's a really good person. Yeah. From yeah. what I've known so far, yeah. You know, and I hope so. I hope that's the case. I'm bringing together because yeah. you guys yeah. would make fire content together because yeah. you guys are both very well traveled. You yeah. guys have spent extensive amounts of time in Asia. Mm -hmm. Like you guys would be killer together. So you, I, I think you guys. You're in Japan. You're in China. Yeah, bro. Like, like y'all yeah. y'all would yeah. make great content together. Yeah. So I'm I'm a that gap, man. Yeah. There's no reason for us to get fight, fighting each other. And I'm always I'm always willing to make peace. Okay. But as you know, uh, having been in government. As an American, I make peace through strength. I understand. And so once the peace comes, it's like, mm. but still know who's on top. <laughs> like we can be peaceful, can be cool, but, but, but know who's on around. top. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. yeah, know who's on top. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and, and for the record with the internet, the yeah, internet yeah. nerds always come at me saying crazy shit like, you don't have as many subscribers as so-and-so. I'm like, so? yeah, but I have two Rolls Royce mm. and IA and a Maybach and multiple properties mm. in places I don't want to talk about and bank accounts around the world. And I didn't just get that. That's been like the case for over a decade. Yeah. Count up the money.
money, goddammit. Don't count the followers. Count the money. Give me my goddamn respect. <laughs> and also, uh, I'm rich in bitches for the for the record. If is that a metric as well? I, I've never heard that one, but that's yeah, a new I'm, one. I'm, I'm rich, I'm rich in like bitches. <laughs> Actually, this is the business Yo. segment. I'm, I apologize. Let us stay. <laughs> On we'll the talk business. about the hose after. Yes, for forgive sure. me. Uh, okay. And we got some coming later on as well, so that'll be interesting. Um, <laughs> I like how he said, my back. <laughs> my back. The my back. That's funny. Uh, yeah. What else do we got here? Do, um, okay. Any any other... Uh, ran- oh, well, you know, we could, we could save it. Guys, again, fnfsuperchat.com. If you guys want to uh, get involved in the show, ask a question. We're going to read 20 and up from this point forward. Also, do me a favor, guys. I think uh, three and a half K of y'all watching right now on YouTube and another couple thousand over on Rumble. So, guys, uh, like the video on YouTube. Open up another tab, actually, if you guys don't mind. And sub to Rumble, man. Yeah, we got... Yeah, on we got almost 10,000 y'all watching. We got almost 7,000 watching on, on Rumble. So, guys, do me a favor. Open up a tab on YouTube. Uh, sorry, open up a tab that's YouTube. Like the video on there so we can continue to stay in the algo with YouTube because YouTube do is it. how people, uh, you know, discover us. But then, you know, we're going to bring you all over to Rumble, the dark side, because Rumble is way better than YouTube. So, Mark, I first have, uh, uh, discovered you on the Avengers panel. FNF hosted an Access Vegas studio a little wow. while ago. Yeah, that was a great discussion. Yeah. You stood out as a classy gentleman and high-value man. Much respect. Yeah, appreciate definitely. that. Definitely. That was a great discussion, actually. Very good. Speaking mm-hmm. of which, during that, that um, discussion, we talked extensively about education in college, right? Sure. Um, you're a very educated guy. You got, you know, obviously you got your undergrad from Cal. Uh, you got your master's degree from John Hopkins. Great, fantastic universities, right? Sure. Um, can you tell the people a little bit about college? Is it a scam? Mm-hmm. If people do decide to go to college, yeah. how should they go about it? Um, what's your thoughts on higher education in general? Because I would say in the past... 10 years, there's been a complete shift where people are saying college is a scam, et cetera, yes. which I agree with it to the most part, but there are circumstances where college is absolutely necessity depending on what you want to go into. But what are your thoughts on this in general? I want everyone to know there's a ton of cameras, so I don't know which camera to look into. <laughs> don't worry about you it. Right? Me, but fine. I'm dead serious. I would look you in the eye if I knew which eye, okay? I'm very serious. And, you know, yes, I've gone to elite universities and... I've also done business with a tremendous number of universities. That was my business. Yeah. I could say that I'm an expert at some level, right? No, you are. So in as <laughs> much I appreciate that. And you know, I wanted to give you guys also your compliment when the gentleman had asked about, you know, how's he gonna do his shorts for uh Jay Waller. Mm-hmm. And I want to say, like, this is the guy who knows. Like mm-hmm. you guys are the experts in this stuff. So he got advice from the expert, which is where you should go. Anyways, with regards to college. Is college a scam? There are many things that you hear common in the culture that are frankly either too simple to be true or they're outright lies. Mm -hmm. Is college a scam? If you just take that sentence, that is a complete lie. Mm -hmm. And I say this as a person who, if I could do it over again, would not go to college. Damn. So guys, listen to what he's about to say here. This is very important stuff. So is college a scam? Absolutely, it is not a scam. If you're talking about just across the board, if you go to an elite university, you take a degree in, for, let, for, remove elite. If you go to any university, you take a, a degree in mathematics, you take a degree in software engineering and electrical, uh, uh, electrical engineering and computer science, mm-hmm. you take a degree in chemistry, um, you take a degree in accounting. Those are all degrees that will lead you to what's called gainful employment. Yeah. You will get an entry-level position Those are strong degrees. And with mathematics, you can go into currency speculating. You can go into paper assets. You can go into Wall Street. You can go into investment banking. You will make that money back. Mm -hmm. The great majority of degrees, you see, college is not a scam. The degree you pick makes it a scam. Bam. There you go. There you go. That is choice. It's choice. If you major in something that ends in the word studies, Chicano studies, African-American studies, gender studies, Fill in the blank with something stupid. Studies. Stupid. You have been scammed, but guess what? Like Khaled said, you played yourself. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, no one else did that to you. So Mm -hmm. that aspect of college is a scam. What are the critical aspects of college that get you to the next level? The network. Network, yeah. And if you want the network, you can't go to an average college. You have to go to an elite college because you're with wealthy families. My first tech company that was successful, you're all at the early stages. You're broke. You need money. And I remember I was working hard on a company, good buddy of mine, because I founded a fraternity when I was in university. So I have strong relationships. Jewish young man. He had already founded a company that was successful. And in fact, it was his mother that encouraged me to go into business. I was I was trying to help people. I wanted to teach for America. I wanted to help young, impoverished black kids like myself realize that education can take you anywhere. That's what I was focused on. And she told me, and I write this in my book, The Black Box. She said, hey, Marquette, uh, Based on what I know of you, you're a leader. Uh, what are you doing being a teacher? 
I said, you know, I'm thinking about running a nonprofit after this. She said, oh, you want to run a nonprofit, do you? She was like, are you a rich man's wife? Are you a rich man's wife? Because that's what they do. They create nonprofits and then they get their husband to give them a little money and their <laughs> husband's friends give a little bit of money. She's yep. like, but if you really want to do something, if you're really a leader, you need to be able to cut the check. And if you want to cut the check, you need to be a businessman. Mm. Stop with this nonsense of being a school teacher. You went to Berkeley and Johns Hopkins to become a public school teacher. She said it like it was pathetic. Mm-hmm. It was like almost like almost made me ashamed to want to help people in that way. Yeah. She says, let others do it. It's not for you. Okay. Now, I say that to say this. I went from that and went into business. Uh, is college a scam? Uh, no, because my mother couldn't tell me that. This Jewish kid's mother who was a professor and a successful journalist around the world and her husband a successful entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles and represented all of the stars... She was able to tell me that I only had access to her because of the college I went to. And then when I fell short on capital for my startup company, which I had sacrificed everything for, sacrificed my personal credit, sacrificed all of my money, sacrificed other people's money. When I ran out of money, my buddy David says, he's like, hey, how's your how's your startup going? Oh, it's going pretty good. You know, he's like, oh, OK. And he knew I'd been working hard. and He knows the kind of man I am. He says, hey, I got, a, I got a bunch of cash I got to do something with. I don't want to take it to the bank or anything like that. He's like, yeah, I'll give it to you. You just give it back to me when you can. Now, mind you, his startup's cracking. I forget exactly how much it was. Maybe hand me like $8,000, mm-hmm. which to now is like, you know, we'll fuck that off in a day. Yeah. But at that time, when you have no money yeah. and you're like in your early 20s, it's, it's like, world. damn, you just handed me $8,000 with no contract. Just love. Mm-hmm. Just love. I personally did not have friends who could do that, that I grew up with who were living a legal lifestyle. Yeah. Right. So getting access to those kind of people was a direct result of the university I went to Yeah, and it didn't end there. And from there I branched out a massive network that can allow me to do anything. And you know, when people say funny shit on the internet, it like, it, it cracks me up because you know, I, you know, sometimes I'm on a live session. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to such and such country tomorrow. And they're like, you're not going to, the, you know, you're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. And I was like, ah, huh, that's strange. Cause like, not only am I going to that country, like I, I know the, the head of police there and mm-hmm. like, you know, it's like the network is so strong now and you're in government. So I know like, yeah. so college, if you want to go big network matters and where you went to school matters, it's it a social call. It's a, it's a, like a business car. It's like a social thing, yeah. you know, but if you're paying directly to get an outcome, you need to take a good degree and it doesn't matter what college you go to at that point. And now if you're a kid who doesn't like school and many don't, I didn't like school. I was good at it, but I didn't like it. I would love like to study under someone like you. If that's what they want to do, like they want to get into your field, study under someone like you. That's called a, um, an apprenticeship mm. right now. I'm doing a practicum, which is essentially a course where you get to learn. I'm doing a practicum practicum called how to create and monetize your app. So you're getting the lecture type education that you would get regularly, but I'm also actually building an app and you're going through the entire process. I'm telling you everything that I'm doing. I'm investing this amount of money. Here's why. Hey, we need to do version two. We're on the beta. What do you think we need to change? Hey, I got a task for you. I want you to do this work. So by the time you're done with my practicum, if you were to apply to a job, you could say, hey, I've experienced bringing 100,000 users onto a technology. I've experienced onboarding. I've experienced doing customer discovery. I've experienced with uh, AWS. I've experienced hiring developers and you've actually done the things. And one of the young men had said something to me that was entertaining uh, and it let me know I was doing the right thing. He said, Hey, Marquette, uh, this is kind of hard. What he meant was tedious. That was the word It's tedious. Like you actually have to do stuff yeah. to get paid. Yep. And I was like, that's right. It, it's, it's not hard. It's tedious. And it's important that you understand that it's tedious. And that is why I have all of my cars are 100,000 plus because I'm willing to go through this. But here's the thing. Once you finish, you never really finish. But but once you get to market and users get on it, you have what's called a money machine and the money keeps on going. Mm -hmm. And now you're in a different position than these other suckers who are working day and night, nine to five. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, if I don't want to go to college, I take my practicum, which you can get at marquetism.com, or I study under someone like you because to be able to watch you and observe how you guys work and how you network, that is the ball game is getting to the transaction. How do I get paid? College doesn't teach you how to get paid. It might teach you how to be a great employee, 
uh, but it won't teach you how to get paid as an entrepreneur. Wow. And, and that's probably one of the best explanations for it. Um, I, I, from my experience, too, because I've always said, you know, in general, you know, college can absolutely be a scam depending on what you do. Yeah. Um, like me, for example, right? If I had not went to Northeastern in Boston, I wouldn't have met certain individuals who right. made me have a different outlook on life on what is possible. Yeah. Made me realize that material things are stupid. Spending a bunch of money on Jordans might not be the best move. You know, spending a bunch of money on designer, et cetera, right? At least in my, especially in my younger age when I didn't have the money to do so, living mm -hmm. beyond my means. Like it taught me like, hey, like being successful is like the number one thing and then you can go ahead and choose to buy that stupid shit once you make the money. But Correct. when you're building up, you gotta, you know, um, it's um, delayed gratification. So it definitely opened me up to like a different class of people because I had never yes. been around rich people until I went to college. Right. And just like your situation where you were exposed to this woman who was a lawyer, excuse me, no, journalist, and she was a professor, professor mm -hmm. who was married to a lawyer, uh, powerful people. Yes. It, put, it lets you see what's possible, especially when you come from an inner city like I did. Right. Yes. So I think that's important. But I 100% I agree with you that. If you're going to go the college route, it's got to be one of two things. You either got to major in something that's going to get you an entry-level job immediately, which is what you were saying before, yes. or if you are going to have a bullshit degree, you better go to fucking Harvard or Yale you, because you that better. network will make up for your shitty-ass degree because the reason why Ivy League schools, Harvard, Yale, Cornell, Princeton, Penn, Dartmouth, uh, uh, did I say Princeton? No, I said Princeton. I think it's like eight or nine Ivy League schools. Yeah. I, I named, I think, six or seven. Yeah. But either way, you guys get what I'm saying. They're all in the Northeast, right? Uh, you, you, um, uh, what's the one in New York? Um, the one in Cornell. New York. No, there's one in the city. In the city. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Columbia. Columbia. Yeah. Columbia, right? Like, the reason why these schools, right, are so prestigious and people love them so much is because they have huge endowments. They have a huge network. Yeah. Once you get out, even if you major something bullshit, you're going to probably find a job. Right. Right? I mean, just to give you guys a perspective on how strong some of these schools are when it comes to networking and money i'll never forget this the universe harvard right as you guys know crew is a very you know affluent uh, rich sport right <laughs> right 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 now a boat guys an empocker is about fifty thousand dollars an eight right a nice row college and it was a struggle for you know northeastern to get it you know a boat here and there boston university you know we get boats every now and then right because you know it's a private school a lot of wealthy people are alumni harvard has a waiting list you ha you're on a waiting list to donate fifty thousand dollars to get a boat named after you. I mean, if that doesn't speak boss to talk, it, yeah, man, like that, boss talk. That's the difference, man. And we used to make fun of Harvard and you know yeah. talk our shit, blah blah blah. But schools like that where there's a waiting list to donate fifty thousand dollars, that tells you guys the type of once you have a degree there, the type of network you're going to be open to. So if you are going to major something bullshit, you better go to a damn good school that's going to get you a job. Northeastern they had a co-op program which I was able to get my government job through them mm -hmm. because they had connections with Homeland Security. Boom. So that was how I was able to get my foot in the door to yeah. get that job, six figure job out of college. Um, well, it started at 60, 70 K. I was, worked for and four or five cares? years, hit yeah. 100 K, was able to take that money, invest it. Now you guys have the podcast that you see here. Yes. But I had not, would not have been able to do that had I not went to college. So my thing when it comes to college is it's got to be either A, you're majoring in something that's going to find you an entry level job, or it's going to get you a skill set that will be a higher earning, like a doctor, lawyer, et cetera. Or you better go to a damn near Ivy League school that will get you a network that will get you a job right out. Can I say something crazy? Please. And, you know, I can say just fine now, but you know, I was considered going into clandestine services for a number of uh, probably obvious reasons. Uh, uh, application didn't fully go through. Intel agencies? Yeah. Okay. Would you agree that there are feeder schools that, you know, if you really want to be well positioned going to FBI, CIA, Homeland, there are a number of feeder schools that you're going to have a much better opportunity. Absolutely. Right? The guy that hired me was a Northeastern alum. Bingo. That that's how I got in with Homeland Security. Like, so I I I was I was an the things that helped me was I was an athlete, Division One athlete. I had a like a three point three GPA, but I spoke Arabic as well. But that helped me because yes. the guy that hired me was a Northeastern former football player, mm -hmm. and I was an athlete. So they're like, okay, this guy has good grades, and he's an athlete, he speaks Arabic. Boom, let's pick him up. Yeah. But if I didn't go to Northeastern, I would never got that job. And there's definitely universities that have shoe ins with certain agencies or certain heavily positions, reliant. Yeah. You yes, know, heavily. so. That's also something as well, and I think that kind of gets overlooked. But again, a, major, a lot of the times, a lot of y'all go to college at some shitty-ass school with a shitty-ass major with a shitty-ass degree. Yeah, you're not going to get a job. But if you go to a more prestigious school that has a network uh, or you're majoring in something that will get you a job, then it's worth it. People underestimate the power of a network. You made a very good point because even getting a degree, you might know something, yeah. but you don't know the workspace. You don't know, for example, the culture, the career, how it even works. Versus you have someone that knows, like a professor that you shadow or you kind of like apprentice, he can say, you know what, 
Marquette is a, a quick student. He's very well laid out. He's very well set up. And he wants to do well and work hard. You know what? I have some buddies over here at a company. They want to hire somebody. And people that went to school, did ma- uh, honors or everything like that, they don't, they, don't, they don't know anybody, but they want a job. That's right. But guess who gets it? The guy that they know. Yeah. But inside. Every time. All the time. Yeah. Every time. And is it fair? No. Life is not fair. But whose fair. fault is it? Yeah. Your, Your fault. network. That's, that's they what literally you. had something <laughs> called over at the H side, they had the Northeastern Mafia. Mm-hmm. Like, and yeah. it, like it, a bunch of alum that like, you know, graduated from Northeastern and then they opened up that internship program for students specifically from Northeastern. So yeah. certain, school, certain schools do have shoe-ins with certain government agencies, uh, companies, uh, you know, startups, whatever it may be that you want to get involved in, like figure out what you want to do, figure out which schools have the best connections to do so mm-hmm. and go and, and do it, you know, go in there with, I think the biggest mistake is when you go in undeclared, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You're going yeah. in there without a plan. Do not do that. That's when you mess up. I do not do that. I had a friend, he wasn't really good at networking, but he asked a question to his, uh, he asked, I think he asked his teacher a question. He said, Hey, listen, I want to get a job after this is done. How do I go about it? Mm. He said, you know what? I'm going to watch it more closely. I'll pay attention to what you got going on. We'll, we'll see from there. Mm-hmm. He did well in school, stayed stay later than most students, did all the homework. He saw the focus and confidence. He said, you know what? I'll make a phone call. Mm-hmm. Make a phone call. Yeah. Now he's working at Microsoft. Yeah. Boom. That's how it works. That's yeah. a good gig. And yeah. I, I think the biggest takeaway here, guys, is if you're going to go to college, go in with a plan. Yes. Go to a prestigious school or major in something that's going to get you a job. Try to get scholarships so you can lower your debt. Yeah. If not, then go. If you're not sure what get you want to do, bro. get a trade. Yeah. Simple. You know, and and uh, you got you know two college grads here telling you guys that like if we could do it again, we could probably get by without school. Stop but, it! I would um, not do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but yeah, especially yeah. nowadays. Yeah, yeah, with all the knowledge out there for free. But, it's different. Um, it's so different. Yeah. It is. Mm-hmm. It's it's way different now, especially with like you know the internet and you being able to learn so much online. I mean, when I was going to college in like oh nine, um, you didn't have this vast amount of information for free on the internet. Right. Like the YouTube wasn't a thing like that. It wasn't like an education tool like that. You know, but like nowadays it's you know crazy how much info, I have a friend right that studied so hard in school, bro. Like every day studying, going crazy, got a master's degree. Mm-hmm. I think it was in like communications or whatever. I can't remember what uh, it was some in. Some bullshit. But <laughs> you know where they work now? Where? At a pet shop. Damn. Okay. And I'm like, wait, you spent all that time in school. <laughs> yeah, bro. Took out a pet shop, minimum wage. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, this is not worth it. Yeah. But once again, it was choices that they made, mm-hmm. degrees that they made, and not having a network. What yeah. do you expect? Go to and, trade school. Yeah, yeah, go to a trade school. Done. At that point, you know, for so so many guys, if you don't know what you want to do, guys, don't go to college. Yeah. That's my yeah. biggest That's thing. That's scary, bro. Don't yeah. don't go to college if you don't know what you don't want yeah. to do. Um, uh, what else do we got here? Um. Oh. 60 Minute Man finally got the gold whale. We need Aaron Clary back for Money Mondays. We'll bring it back. Don't yep. worry. Uh, Myron, when you find a wife in the Middle East, how many weeks or months of the year do you intend to spend outside the U.S.? Will you be living on call? What is the ideal situation? Uh, it depends on what kind of business ventures I've set up at that time. As you guys know, I'm building a real estate portfolio. Ferris Larris. Yo, shout out to you, shout bro. Shout out to you, bro. Big supporter. And uh, these from earlier. Okay, Mark. This Thank guy you. With the he su- no, he super chatted it, so I appreciate him supporting you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Um. What? Okay. So what led well, what up? What is an NFT though? <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? What, does it stand for what? like non fungible token? Right. Something like that. Okay. Right. Yes. You know that the fascinating thing. Yeah. Is and, and this is important for guys who want to be something, right? Like I'm wearing a suit right now. Every time I do business, I always wear a suit. Or every time I want to take position, I always talk about people, places, position. You want to always be around the right people. What can these people do for me? Can they get me to where I need to be? Is this the right place? Is this a safe place for me to be in? Is this a place of affluence and opportunity? Uh, People, places, positions, right? I always wear a suit because, you know, you'll hear black folks complain about racism all the time, which racism is real. Yeah. But it's not strong enough to stop you from achieving. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Agree with that 1,000%. But one thing I know for sure (laughs) is... There's certain things that you you hear it and you got to say, huh? Like, for example, you got a, a kid like Destiny, right? Blue haired booty bandit. <laughs> oh, my God. You, oh, man. You, you got the blue haired booty bandit. <laughs> this kid worked at a restaurant, had to quit his job because it was too much to work at a restaurant and go to school. Then he fails out of school, right? Mm-hmm. Spends all of his time playing video games, which is, is what kids do. I understand. So then, you know, he's debating me. Uh, I went to elite universities and my background is as an inventor of technology. I invented a vertical in technology, effortless attendance. We're the first people to be able to take attendance in the university setting like that. And then there were many copycat companies after that. Mm -hmm. 
got investment from well-known investors. And I'm not going to name the companies, but like one of them, for example, is the largest dating, uh, online dating <clears throat> technology in the world. Tinder? Anyways, <laughs> so uh, Tinder is owned by another company. Okay. This is that company. Gotcha. So you got me, got the education, got the technolo- uh, technology pedigree. Then you ask me, like, what is an NFT? Those are the kind of things that subconsciously you got to say, huh, that'd be, that's a strange thing to ask. That's like asking uh, Michael Jordan, like, what's a double dribble? Or asking Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> what's a shoulder roll? Yeah. And the question is like, well, why do you look at a certain person who already is proven, but you ask them something to suggest that they're an imposter? Even though what I've done is easily found on Google or on Forbes, right? So these are the funny things. And I always want to let people know, like, don't ever let anyone lower you because what they're trying to do is lower you. So if you're a real boss, always stand tall. I'm too tall to act small. So someone asks you something like, what's an NFT? It's like, I'll Google that when I'm in the Maybach using the Wi-Fi in the back of the Maybach (laughs) with the tray table. Like, I'll Google it, see if I can find it out. But maybe I'll never find it out. How did that debate come to be? Oh, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, it wasn't a debate. He he rage quit it. He started playing piano during the debate because he got mad. Because what okay. happened, the reason he brought up NFTs and he got mad yeah. hmm. is because I said, hey, man, like, you're just a grifter online. You're just trying to fleece people out of money. You're not a leader. Hmm. Just play your video games. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> and, and he got big mad. And he was like, why am I not qualified to be a leader? I didn't say this, but in my head, I was thinking, because you, I'm not going to say it's me, but, <laughs> <laughs> but what, it, bro. What, what I did say is I said, mm-hmm. check out this video, right? Mm-hmm. So we play the video. In the video, you can see him in full HD stating anyone who sells NFTs is just a grifter. They're just a con artist looking for a bigger sucker. And you know what's funny? I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I was like, so you saw yourself right there, right? You said selling NFTs is a scam. Check out this other video. Play shows destiny oh you know look you know you can actually make money selling nfts and the content creator gets 10 percent. so i could actually sell my clips and you know i got some legendary twitch clips i can sell my twitch clips as nfts and get paid for it and you guys want to support me right i was like bro you's a cold hypocrite <laughs> you said they're a fraud and here you are selling them to your own fans damn you're a fraud show them the videos the evidence is there so then he rage quit starts playing piano now here's a difference between a character like that, he's defrauding his followers, selling them things he, he himself said was a fraud. I've sent out over $100,000 to my fans. I teach them how to do product-based business. You go to my websites, you see products that I created, and I let you or you, one of the fans, sell them. Like this very watch right here, you can go to mdblabel.com. And if you buy this watch, does it make me money? No, it makes money for a guy named John Jacobs. You see, I sent out over $100,000 to my fans. I've taught them how to fish and I've put money in their pockets. Mm. Radically different than defrauding them on things that I myself said are no good. Mm. So I basically told him like, no, I don't respect you. And that hurt his feelings. He got big mad. Okay. Because I I did see the full uh, debate. I know that you guys had a discussion. I didn't. You know, and I get, once again, right, we're, I, I like Dustin. I get along with right. him. I have respect for him. I'm guy. sure he likes you too. Uh, I think he likes tall guys. Big, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. strong man like yeah. you. I'm sure he likes you too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, but no, he's, he's a good guy. I get yeah. along with him. Um, I Honestly, I'd love skills. to sit. Of all the people you mentioned, yeah. like, hey, we should make peace. Yeah. I actually feel like Destiny and I have had a mis- misunderstanding. Okay. Tr- truth be told, uh, mm. of all the people you mentioned, Destiny is the one guy that I'd be willing to sit down with. Okay. Uh, in as much as, admittedly, I've said some things uh, to him and about him that I, I think were hurtful to him. Mm-hmm. And I'd be willing to sit down with him and hash that out. Okay. You know, I yeah. don't agree with his behaviors. I think his behaviors are filthy and immoral. Uh, but I respect him as a human being. I respect everyone as a human being. Yeah. And in as much as that's the case, I'd be willing to sit down with him and, and be civil. And, you know, because one thing I don't want to be my legacy is um, a, a kind of intolerance that um, edges on, you know, making other people feel like they're less than. Just because I find something you do to be reprehensible or immoral or disgusting 
doesn't mean that you need to walk through your life with your head down. Mm -hmm. And so I want to teach people that you can tell someone, I don't agree with your behaviors. I think it's vile. I don't want people to be like you. I don't want this to spread while maintaining a respectful relationship. Yeah. What about yeah. academics? Um, academics are a funny ass everybody. dude. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I'll make the connection between you and Destiny. Destiny's yeah. a good guy. I'll, I'll make yeah. that happen. I, yeah. And I'd love to. I actually, yeah, yeah I, 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 got, I got a good amount of respect for Destiny. The fact that, you know, he can come on platforms where people he disagrees with and have a yeah. civil discussion. I didn't say like I respect him, but go ahead. All right, okay. That's fine. I'm saying I respect <laughs> this him. This guy I respect right here. The guy. I'm, saying, <laughs> this guy. I'm saying me personally, I respect <laughs> the guy. Um, um, DJ Fatademics. Livingston. God. Here we go. Now, Yo, that's the listen, homie, man. That's the homie. I want everyone to know I ended his shit. Listen to me. The super villain ended his shit. You heard me? And I want the record to record that DJ Fatademics thought he was that guy. He thought he wanted smoke, but end up what? What happened? You heard me? At the time, I think I was in like, I was in like some small Eastern European country. I think I was in uh, Poland, actually. Mm -hmm. I was in Poland, flaming this shit on bad internet. You heard me? They had me on dial-up, 56K internet, flaming this shit. Now, here's the thing. The ball said he could flame anybody. Yeah. He got in the ring with a serious opponent, got his shit shattered by a prime Mike Tyson. He ain't speak my name after that. You heard me? Turn the boy into a mime. Let the whole internet record his own fans were saying the Saint and the Shinner, the Saint and the Sinner fucked your shit up. <laughs> you heard me? His own fans. I'm not gonna lie, he did type out though. That was a body. Then he started lying. He's like, I can't even, I can't even like talk to these people like unless they show me bank statements. Which bank? Which <laughs> bank? At that time, I went to that country to deposit money. And they told me, we can only insure up to this, this amount. Let us introduce you to another banker. Which bank are you talking about? It's not about money. It's about the fact that you got fucking flamed. Damn. And by the way, for people like DJ Fatademics, you make your living by lambasting and verbally assaulting dimwits, rappers, Drill rappers who can barely speak English, <laughs> right? The ignorant among the African American masses. But then I step up all of a sudden. He quiet as a church mouse. Those are called bullies, friends. Those are called bullies. Well, now the big bad wolf is here, the super villain. You're me, the warrior king of this YouTube thing. Tell everybody to shut their mouth when I come around. Carrying on. <laughs> you know who's my favorite person that you roasted? O'Shea. Oh, man. That was beautiful. <laughs> You ended that nigga, bro. Listen. <laughs> that's one person I agree with that. You yeah. roasted like 100%. That was 100%. a great roast, bro. Listen. You notice I never mentioned O'Shea online. <laughs> yeah, not no more. No, really. You notice I've never yeah. mentioned him since the roast. Mm -hmm. Some things are on the internet, and then if I ever stop talking about something, I stop talking about it for a reason. And he's never mentioned me again. Yep. If people knew the story, nobody else would mention me. Yeah, he's not one to be played with, bro. Yeah. If not people knew why he doesn't mention me and I don't mention him, no one else would mention me. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking. Hey, man. You one person you don't play with is Marquette, you, bro. Something called the. I mean, bro, you over here gossiping on other people. That's literally what the dude does. It's ridiculous, man. That's not masculine behavior. That's what, um, that's what girls do, bro. Yeah, so I'm just. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, <sighs> you know, they say intelligent people talk about things, p stupid people talk about people. people. Gossip, so bro. we'll move and actually, on. That's a sin in the Bible, gossip. Yeah. That's a sin in the Quran as well. There Back you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it is. Yep. It's a good book. Uh, love the show, guys. Keep up the good work. A question to the saint Can you describe what an NFT is? This Again, thing, bro? Bro. I tell you what, I will describe it, but he needs to send my people at least 200. And, <laughs> and I will consider describing this. It'll be difficult. Uh, it'll be a strain. <laughs> it'll be a strain, but I think I can figure it out. I'm telling you, they were spamming that in the chat. Was yeah. NFT? I was like, what the? It's nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the heck? I am a, I am a legend, and this is when you know that you use the potent ingredient in what you said. Mm. You use the truth, because it burns people up so much they just can't let go. Yeah. I mean, they just can't let go. And here's another thing. Just can I like, can I talk my shit real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, please. I always want everyone to be happy and enjoy life. I am actually the happiest man on the planet Earth. I really am. If you study what I actually do on a regular basis, all I do is travel around the world and try to slay the baddest hoes in each country. That's really all I do with my free time. And get suits tailored from scratch. That's it. Okay. And shoes handmade. That's it. That's all I'm really doing with my life, right? That's why I can't be a proper YouTuber because I'm never in the studio. I'm trying Probably. to slay these bad chicks and, you know, these models. But I want to say this. When the greatest insult that your enemies can level at you is what is an NFT, You've lived your life right. When the greatest insult you can tell me, like I have a book you can read about my whole life. 
the best insult you have is what is an NFT? Damn it, I've lived my life really well. And for those who actually want to know the answer to what is an NFT? Marquetism.com purchase conference two footage. <laughs> I actually did a whole conference before we had that conversation teaching people how to create NFTs. So it's, it's ironic. Very interesting. Viable it option. Is, it is ironic. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a question for you. Um, tech has switched up a little bit, you know, since, um, you know, in the, over the past 10 years or whatever, right? Okay. We're moving towards, you know, people talking about AI, chat GBT, right. all this crap, right? Mm -hmm. Um, if someone wanted to get into tech now and wanted to make a bunch of money, because we get questions from people all the time. Hey, I want to get into tech. What should I major in school? What should I do? Yes. What's the path? Um, what would you advise someone do if they want to get into the tech world nowadays? To make money. So you Right, to make money. So your outcome is to make as much money as possible. Yeah. You're going to want to get into tech on the founder side. You're going to want to be in a B2C company if it's your okay. first company. If Can you, you explain have, what a B2C company sure. is and then a B2B? Yeah, so it's B2B, B2C, and B2G. Okay. B2C is business to consumer. Consumer. Okay. Right? So you're the business selling to an individual consumer, which means you're selling to an individual person who can be whimsical. B2B is business to, to business. business. You're yeah. a business selling to another business. The challenge with selling to businesses is that it takes a collaboration of persons to make decisions. Mm -hmm. There's a chain of command, a hierarchy. You usually don't know the person at the top. Mm -hmm. And also you have to be able to establish those two, generally two, but possibly three value propositions. A, I can demonstrate that I can make you this much money in your business. Or mm -hmm. B, I can demonstrate that I can save you this much money in your business. Or C, I can help you meet these regulatory yeah. you know, things. So... That's more difficult. It's advanced and you, you're going to need more money in your bank personally to lever, uh, use that kind of company. And the same thing is true of B2G, business to government. Now, B2G is we're talking huge amounts of money, right? Like you're really not doing a deal less than $100,000. Yeah. When you do government B2G, contract. you might sell the government weapons or you might sell them uniforms for the army or you might sell them fill in the blank. But everything you sell is in bulk bulk, right? Yeah. Like hundreds of thousands of units. And that's a great business. I'd recommend you start in a B2C business with a very simple and clear revenue model that is focused on an average consumer. And what I'm saying is you'd be the Walmart of technology. You have a technology that everyone can use. There's not one person on earth who, I, see, I choose not to go into Walmart, but I can go in there and buy a great many things. Mm -hmm. So you want to be Walmart in as much as who can't use TikTok. You have old thoughts using TikTok, young thoughts using TikTok. You have grown men using TikTok. Everyone can use it. So that's the kind of technology you want to create. And those are all simple technologies. You see, people often bring up AI now. One, frankly, no one understands it, uh, like the people who are talking about it. And, and B, very few people actually are building AI. Mm -hmm. They might say something is AI, but it, it's usually not AI. Okay. Um, it, AI is very expensive and very complex. Can you ex tell us, because it's getting thrown out everywhere nowadays, yes. right? And, and as a real tech professional here that's made millions of dollars doing this, what is real AI versus what people are describing on the internet? L let's put it simple. And this is this is occurring consistently. They're, they're trends and fads, right? Like yeah. it used to be yeah. big data it used to be a thing. Oh, yeah, you know, our technology uses big data. And then it was blockchain. Oh, you yeah. know, our technology is <laughs> on the blockchain. Yeah. Why? Why is it on the blockchain? Why? Can you explain to me why this needs to be on the blockchain? Or how about this? Explain what the blockchain is. Hmm. You know, people are using terms because they're popular. And, and truth be told, they're marketing terms more than anything. So let's talk AI, right? So people will use the term AI and they're talking about like a simple chat chat bot, right? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about ch uh, chat GBT. We're talking about a chat bot. So say you ever message a business on WhatsApp or on Facebook and you know, it could be Spirit Airlines, right? Because you always have customer service issues on Spirit Airlines and you message of them, course. hey, I missed my flight. Then Spirit Airlines will automatically reply to you on Messenger and say, Oh, is your issue a missed flight? Is your issue that you need to rebook? Is your issue this? And you click something and then it'll say something else to you. Yeah. And people think, oh, this is AI. It's, it seems like a human interacting with me. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's very, fairly simple logic there. It's kind of like a this or this. If they click this, then this. Oh. The software is not thinking. There's, there's no machine learning. It's not artificial intelligence. Intelligence suggests thinking. Gotcha. It's artificial because it's not a human brain. Yeah. You, you've coded some things that lets it take information, assimilate information, and then come up with something new. Gotcha. Whereas usually people are con, con, uh, confusing this idea of, let's simply say, pathing yeah. with artificial intelligence. Gotcha. Artificial Automated intelligence. responses 
for preconceived options yes. is not artificial intelligence. Correct. Okay. Artificial intelligence is like a computer thinking. Yeah. And this is I'm telling them something extremely specific and they're giving me back an answer based on the specific circumstances I announced in my problem. And importantly, it can create something new. Okay. It can give you an option or give you a piece of information that is new. Gotcha. That is the thinking, the cre it creates. So for example, with Chat GPT, which I also think that people don't know how to properly utilize chat GBT to make money to this day. Uh, but the two common forms of AI that people actually have interacted with are chat GBT and then the image creation one. So if I go on a, a, a image creating chat, uh, image creating artificial intelligence and I say, Hey, I want to see a version of, uh, Myron gains that destiny will find attractive. And so then it, it generates an image automatically. <laughs> so that? it'll show Myron gains with orange hair and, and a big booty wearing like that Borat G string, you know, the neon one, you know, so it'll show something like that. Yeah. And it thought of that. There's nowhere on the internet that yeah. destiny could currently find a photo of you with orange hair wearing a neon color G string. It yeah. created that. You see what I'm saying? The imagery is shattering, bro. God Precisely. Damn. Precisely. Pause. So big pause. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. So that's artificial intelligence, and they. I bet they could even create an <laughs> NFT of that as well. Yeah. Because okay. <laughs> I know they love NFTs. Um, so that's artificial intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> Do I recommend that people who want to go into software go into artificial intelligence? No. That's like. Hey, Marquette, I want to learn how to play basketball. Oh, great! Let me put you on this team with LeBron. No, like you're, you're going into the most sophisticated end of technology. And here's the funny thing. The technologies that make the most money are the ones that appeal to the brain dead masses. Bam. Mm. There you go. Uh, okay. So that, I mean, I just learned a bunch there. Like, um, so because people tend to throw out that artificial intelligence yeah. term all the time. Of course. Yeah. And the reality is most of this stuff doesn't even constitute as it. And uh, would you say that we're probably... Since most of the things that people think is AI isn't really AI, it's right. just literally preconceived answers based on, I guess, ans uh, questions and or phrases that might have been thrown to them in the first place, and they just kind of have it in a data bank. Yes. How close are we to real AI then? Well, AI does exist. It's just uh -huh. not in common usage. Gotcha. So yeah. it's like far and few between. Can you give us an example maybe of every in every day where there's real AI? Camera. Example the, maybe? The closest thing that we get to AI and you'll hear people talking about this and, and sometimes they're exaggerating. They're like, oh yeah, like, you know, if you do this, the algorithm will, like they refer to the algorithm. Yeah. Which sounds creepy as hell. Like it made me, like, it's like the algorithm, like it's a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's what real AI feels like. It feels like it is a person. That, that's the closest thing we get to on a daily basis in terms of a consumer interacting with something that has artificial intelligence when it's choosing what things to push out to you that are new. Like, for example, with Spotify, if Spotify suggests a new artist, mm -hmm. well, they've taken a number of values and the technology did some thinking to say, OK, well, if you like Drake and you like Young Thug, um, we think that you'll like this artist so maybe it's future right there is intelligence that can go into that for example it can do an analysis on the the language of the actual music right and say like a, a mumble rapper they tend to have shorter bars right or, yeah. or a drill rapper will have shorter bars yep. the, the rhymes are tighter there's fewer words per bar yeah and so you can actually on a text analysis basis find out like oh, okay well the baby and young thug linguistically have similar lyrics so if we know that he likes this rapper, he'll probably also like Da Baby because they're both they've both been categorized as hip hop rap in, from a genre standpoint. And so in analyzing this, the technology thinks and then suggests Da Baby if you listen to Young Thug. Wow. Okay. So social media uh, evolved right now. though. It never started that way. I want everyone to understand. Like okay. when you're trying to create a technology, like, oh, you want to create YouTube or you want to create Spotify. Uh, Spotify's first iteration was not sophisticated like that. Of course. Uh, YouTube's wasn't either, and Facebook obviously wasn't either. And they evolved to these things. So uh, an example could be of, of like real AI would be like the YouTube algorithm where you're feeding a certain information on what you're watching. And it's real time processing what you're watching. Look at the minutes watched. Look at how much you interacted with the content and giving you spitting out content creators that you would probably like based on your real time viewing decisions. Sure. And remember that okay. there's levels to everything, of right? Course, yeah. There's levels to AI. There's one AI that you say, hey, what is the outfit Destiny would like to see you in? And then it creates an outfit and it's perfect. Like Destiny looks at it like, 
oh, do I want to be the top or the bottom? You know, like, like we know it's oh accurate. God. Then there's other technologies that you can plug in the same values. And the only thing it would do to alter you um, is it might I'm trying to think of something basic that this kind of individual would like. Um, I mean, I think I get the okay, idea. Think- <laughs> I get the idea. I mean, I it, it might just only change your hair color, yeah. right? So, so it's simple. Just like human beings have There's levels of intelligence, different levels of sophistication with it, based on how much, how nuanced it's going to be, or how you know detailed it's going to be. But in general, it's giving you information back based on your real time decisions and what you're giving it real time. That's right. And the creator of the AI is the one that defines the level of intelligence of the AI. Okay. So algorithms, you would say, are probably the closest uh, to AI that are simple. I guess that everyone deals with. Well, AI is just or put it this way, software is just mathematics. So when people are saying algorithms, like just, just colloquially speaking, yeah, like when you have more algorithms interacting with a greater data set, then gotcha. you're getting closer to AI. And then when your your technology, yeah, let's just say I that. would okay. argue we haven't really seen what AI can do. You know, what I'm saying like we have an idea what we think it is, but we don't know what it really is. And, and we mostly won't ever. Yeah, like when I say we, I'm just talking like everyday people. The elites will no. But yeah. we don't know. Because th- it's just not necessary and it's not useful and it'll put a significant number of persons out of work. There are a number of lies that are going on. I was just going to ask you that. about. Yeah. Do, do you think AI will reach a point where it will um, take it's, away it's already reached manual that point. labor jobs? It has okay. already reached that point. Most of what we're experiencing in the world is a lie. So, for example, I remember when I first opened my office in South Korea, what is this, maybe, I don't know, like 2014, creeping up on a decade, I don't know. It's a while ago. Mm -hmm. At that time, you walk into a McDonald's and you order on the iPad. There are, there's no one taking orders. Do you ever walk into a McDonald's in America and type in the order on the iPad, except at an airport maybe? Yeah. They're trying to maintain employment. Mm -hmm. So when you hear people, you also hear people say silly things. Like you'll hear Elon Musk say things like, oh, you know, we have a declining population. We need to have more. No, it's irrelevant. The only reason you hear dumb People in politics say things like we can't have declining population. For example, Italy is having majorly declining population. It's a problem. Same thing with many places in Europe. That's because they're focused on a metric of GDP, which is actually not the metric that we should be focusing on. And how it does it make sense that in this world we're concerned with climate change, but at the same time, we're saying we need to maintain high populations in, in Western nations. Mm-hmm. What is a high population? A high population is consumption. What is consumption? Consumption is degrading the climate because of the emissions and all these other things that come with consumption. Mm-hmm. So there's an infinite number of lies that we're experiencing. Karl Marx, for example, his thesis was essentially that <laughs> capitalist economies will evolve such that you will reduce the necessity for human beings by increasing the usage of machines. Mm -hmm. So why is it that there's a problem when you have declining populations? There's not. For example, in like the state of Washington or Oregon, I forget which one it is, you go there and you can't pump your gas. It's illegal. Why? New Jersey too, yeah. New Jersey, yeah. Yeah. Why? Why is that, Myron? It's a bit strange. For employment. Yeah. To keep the idiots employed. Yeah. Because they're too stupid to do anything useful. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because there is a fixed set of IQs. You have people who, you're going to have a portion of the human population that is too dumb to operate in the modern economy. So as a result, to make sure that these people don't have a bunch of free time to do dumb stuff and be dangerous, we keep them busy. Let them pump the gas. Let them take your order in American McDonald's, even though it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And an iPad would do it more accurately. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, there's also <laughs> machines yeah, that facts. make hamburgers <laughs> as well and smoothies. My buddy invested in the smoothie machine, makes smoothies. Wow. Yeah. There are machines that do surgeries as well, better than human beings. Yes. Wow. So mm-hmm. uh, are we talking like, you know, smaller surgeries or are we talking extensive? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about significant surgeries. Uh, in fact, uh, 15 years ago, there was, uh, and I'm try- let me actually, I can tell you the exact time because I gave a speech about this at a university. Um, there's a movie that kind of highlighted this as well. You know, the alien series Prometheus, there's a lady, yeah. uh, I forgot her name. She got injured uh-huh. and it's kind of like sci-fi, but sure. it's, it's vitro. No, it's real. No, and, it's current. Uh, she got injured. Yeah. Um, massive cut. Went to this chamber. The technology fixed her up. Good to go in like an hour. Something closer to home. BBMLD, right? He's got every surgery in the book. 
<laughs> so w- w- when BBL MLD got his uh, his hair done, right? Yeah. You know there are machines that can do the hair transplant for you, right? Really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. They're the machines that can do the hair transplant for you. So um, makes it much quicker, much more efficient, because this stuff takes a long time. It's fairly tedious, and that's why often the doctors are not the ones placing the grafts. Yeah. Is it's the, like the nurse or the assistant. You can have machines place the grafts now. And they're going to place them better, and it's going to be quicker yeah. healing. When I did mine, the doctor, because uh, but I did the old school one with the str- cut the strip in the, the back strip. of the head okay. and then pluck the hairs in. The doctor actually mm-hmm. did that each one for me. But mm-hmm. but there are machines I know that, that actually the 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 ones in Turkey I think mm-hmm. they do the machine. Ooh, and Turkey's going to be the bleeding edge because they get such crazy volume, yeah. right? Yep. The bleeding edge, but not necessarily the best quality. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yours looks great, by the way. Oh, I like I was it, admiring man. the wave game. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, got, got the hair back. He put in work. Yeah, man. Like, this man makes me want to go get an MLD. <laughs> <laughs> get everything done. You hear me? Thanks, man. No, I, I, um, you know, uh, with the, with the, um, the transplant. Because I thought about going to Turkey, but then when I did the numbers in my head, mm-hmm. I was like, Same this cost. doesn't make sense. It's, a, it's gonna actually would have cost me more money and time to go out to Turkey, mm-hmm. recover over there, and everything. So I was like, you know, yeah. man, fuck it, just do it here in the states. Yeah. But they do have good surgeons over there, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like the the, the cutting edge. Um, speaking of foreign, quick. yeah, oh, I could read the chat. Yeah, you know, okay. I got a question, but sure. I'll read these chats real quick. Um, let's go ahead and and uh, hit them up. Um, I'm ringing bell right now. Thanks for keeping my uh, keeping me entertained as rockets flying. Pray for oh, okay. I see what they're, they're yeah. talking about the situation going on. Uh, okay. Peace and saints, shout out to you, rock and ship. Um, uh, an NFT is a unique digital item you can own and prove it's yours done. Okay, fantastic. Him Holland goes, my two favorite creators, much love, peace of saint. Shout out to you, him. Shout uh, out to you. Fresh, do you say, how do you say or pronounce? Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's actually a laughing in Spanish. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what else do we got here? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Rocket Ship, why do you not recommend B2B? Well, he explained that earlier. He just did. Um, and then we got here is uh SCS oh Satan Center. Okay. What are the best books to read or whom would you rec- recommend dead slash live mentors regardless of what stage of life you're in? I'm in medicine, but always looking to improve until I die. Very, Very good. Question. So number one, uh, even though I am an author, uh, I don't recommend books. Okay. I do not recommend books in general. Wow. Is Audible better? Or you mean just No, I, j- I just don't re- like if you want to do something, you have to do something. Okay. And reading is not doing something. Gotcha. Mm. So I do not recommend books. But if you would like to read books that will keep you inspired and educated and give you some knowledge and maybe a, a base uh, to start on, I can recommend the following books. The Black Box is the best book ever written. It's a book for this time. Yeah. I took 10 years to write it. Uh, because what I realized is that if you actually want to do something, it, it requires your emotions. And it's a book that stirs your emotions to actually do something. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, uh, a great book in terms of money management, uh, which you you should learn how to manage money before you have money. I agree a thousand percent. Yeah. Uh, so I would recommend The Richest Man in Babylon. Okay. Oh, by the way, I actually have a whole book list. If you go to Amazon.com slash shop slash The Saint in the Center, I got like probably 50 books on there. But The Richest Man in Babylon, uh, Think and Grow Rich, um, Outwitting the Devil. And I could go on endlessly, but the truth is you're not going to read all those books. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, I always encourage you to prioritize action over all things. Fair. Right. Um, and one note on Henry Ford. Great American and capitalist, changed the world. He's the reason everyone can drive cars. Mm-hmm. Um, Henry Ford was uh, once in a court uh, under oath, and he was asked a basic question that most people who have went to school would be able to answer. He didn't know the answer. It's because he didn't read books, uh, which shows you how critical reading books are. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not critical. He was able to make a tremendous amount of money and change the world such that we speak of him today because he know how to get things done. Bam. Yeah, go out and do something. Wow. Uh, what else do we got here? Shout out to you, Zentians. It's been a while, man. We haven't seen you in a minute. Simpin' ain't pimpin'. Thoughts on, oh, the war. Okay. Um, we might have to go to Rumble for that one. Alamiro, <laughs> love the show. Shocked seeing Neon and his 304 girlfriend. This is crazy. He needs to be saved to uh, to your guest. I heard there's a contract for minority. Can you talk about it? What? I don't know what you mean. What contract? Uh, um, I don't know. Uh, Chris goes, Peace of the Saints, uh, I was very intrigued how the 304 lawyer argued for whoredom as if mm. it was an academic literature. It was like a religion for her. Oh, yeah, you had a debate with... The holosophy. Oh, God. Yes. Uh, how, was, how was that? She was a holosopher. And <laughs> uh, you know what? I tell you, she stuck to it. She she was really committed to win the gold in the Olympics. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, a nice young lady. And I, I was frank with her. I said, you know, I 
make every effort to make sure that your your way of living and thinking does not spread. It is a great poison. Yeah. But what we can understand, and, and she called you guys out during the conversation. She was like, yeah, you know, I get all of my fans from Fresh and Fit's audience. Um, That's sad. That shouldn't be something to the only fans. <laughs> that is man. so Y'all sad, bro. Up, bro. <laughs> God damn. And those are the facts, though, right? Like, never like money. She, yeah. She's getting her fans from guys who say that they despise her type. Mm-hmm. You know, if you really do despise her type and more importantly, love yourself, you have to give up pornography. You have to give up those kinds of obsessions. The world is in decay because of male perversion Mm -hmm. and men's inability to control their emotions. Mm -hmm. If we can get those two things in order, we'll be we'll be in a strong position to to move things forward. But it's upon us. What are your thoughts on because not just her, but a lot Mm -hmm. of women in general tend to look at it like, oh, I get sexual attention from men. So therefore, my value is high. What is up with this? They don't believe delusion. They don't believe that. They're just saying that. They don't believe that. And really, it's a sales pitch, and they're trying to see if you'll buy it. Mm-hmm. The moment you don't buy it at all, they, they swoon over you. And this yeah. is an age-old story, right? You know, they, they see if they can talk themselves up, and if you buy it, then they'll carry on with their chest poked out. Yeah, men love hoes. Yeah. Yeah, for sex only. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you, you look at her like she ain't shit, and you tell her like, uh, bitch, if you walked across the street and got hit by a car, I wouldn't even call 911 for you. <laughs> you know, like, and, and I really Yo. feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Once they realize that you really feel that way, then they're going to scramble to find another way to offer you value mm. because it turns out that their desperate need is to be approved of by you. That's why they put on the makeup and they get the surgeries and all those things. Why yeah. they need some fathers right. in their lives. Yeah. Right. yeah. They need you to love them. Give up a respectable career to be a hoe and try to sit there and tell other women to do the same. I mean, that's just crazy to me because other women actually do want to be married to a strong masculine man that isn't going to be a loser. Because the only type of guy that would accept that ridiculousness like for a long term relationship, correct? Not for sex, guys. Right. Remember, sex. <laughs> Myra, like, I accept yeah. the sex. Yeah, I will accept the sex, <laughs> but I'm not gonna it. fucking take your dumb ass seriously. Right. Um, but women like that are never able to secure those guys long term. Correct. Right. It is what it is. Um, question for you. Um, we talked about Turkey a little bit. You're a very well traveled guy. You've been all over the world. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts on where the United States is right now in comparison to other places that you've been fr- been to, and where do you see the future going? as far as the next place to be. Yes. I often echo that the best politician, the best political leader is an international businessman because he actually understands the world. And the more time you spend in the world, you understand that uh, really the world is just composed of gangs warring against one another. And as Wu-Tang said, Wu-Tang, the deepest political philosophers ever, they said, (laughs) cream, cash rules everything around me. And you will observe no matter where you go, Ah, the almighty dollar is powerful. Do you think why, that's why Trump was so successful, despite people well, hating on because him? Because businessmen get things done. They have to, or else yeah. they go out of business. Yeah. But if you're a career politician like a Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Joe Biden, you've been in a air quote business where if you don't deliver the goods, your business never shuts down. Right. Yeah. And you don't have any competition. I mean, you guys go to the DMV. You got to spend the whole day in the DMV. <laughs> Terrible, bro. It, it's unpleasant. That's why right? the government is so inefficient. Is because they don't have competition. Yeah, I networked though. Mm-hmm. I met one of the uh, managers. Mm-hmm. Now I just make a phone call or text. I get everything done. W. Boom. So <laughs> to answer your question, yeah, uh, a businessman is going to understand the world best. Like for example, I was in uh, I was in Malaysia, which is a great home for a capitalist. Okay. So I was in I was in Kuala Lumpur uh, in Malaysia. They have one of the best uh, Ritz Carltons in the world. Best Waldorf Astoria is in Thailand, strangely. But anyways, they have the best accommodations. Great place for a capitalist. And I went into an off-white. Now, there's a particular sneaker I like that they produce. I already got in different colors. I saw a color I, I didn't have. That's Kanye's brand, right? Or off-white? I, I, that's Virgil. Virgil so, Abloh uh, designed. Yeah, he, Virgil uh, Abloh, he's yeah. now deceased, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Rest in peace to him. Yeah. Awesome yeah. creator. Okay. And these are the kind of guys that, you know, do well for us internationally. Like, these kind of black guys that represent us well when we, you know, travel around the world. Okay. Because uh, they know they know how to play a part, and they understand that. Listen, yeah. my nigga antics can't come over here on some on some level, right? Because when you travel around the world, another reason I wear a business suit, the first thing if they see you or I, their first question is like, "Oh, where are you from?" Mm-hmm. And then you say America, and they're like, "Oh, well, well where are your parents from?" And you say America, they're like, "Oh, where are your grandparents from?" They're waiting for you to say Nigeria or yeah, yeah, like yeah. Some, some African country, right? Yeah. They don't understand the concept of like your family's been in America for 300 years. You just don't know. Uh, But anyways, I say that to say this. Um, When I was in Kuala Lumpur, uh, I saw some shoes in Off-White that I really like. I like to give anecdotes. It makes it easier for people to digest. I saw some shoes that I liked. 
and uh, they didn't have my size. So my assistant says, uh, I'll go online, I'll find them. And we were going to Vietnam. And she says, I'll just mail them to Vietnam. Okay. So then we fly to Vietnam. And eventually, uh, DHO gives us a notification like, hey, your shoes are here. Uh, you, you do have to pay an import tax and duty. Okay, for sure. You know, I think these shoes are probably like you know, six, seven hundred dollars. I'm thinking, well, you know, how much could the import tax be? It's forty percent. Um. So I end up paying over a thousand dollars to get this pair of shoes. Now, why Yo. do I bring right? Now, why do I bring that up? Vietnam is the only place in the world you can go and get a pair of shoes handmade. Why? Because they don't import shoes from other countries. They protect uh, the industry. Yeah. The government has to do that. When I travel around the world, and I'm a real American, I look around, I'm like, damn, wh where, where's the Ford? Where's the GM? Where's the Chevys? Why don't they have our cars here? I travel back to America. We got all their cars here. Yep. We let them send their garbage here. Oh, but you go to these other countries, and they don't want to let us put our cars in their markets. Wow, seems like we're losing. For example, I had an office in South Korea. Mm -hmm. When Trump says make America great again, if you're a business person, if you're well-traveled, you know what he means. Mm -hmm. I had an office in South Korea. You go in that office, it had, next to it, it had a gym, a cafeteria. Mm -hmm. It had two sleeping quarters, so you could like literally take naps and bunk beds. And to get in the office, it's a retina scan. Scans your eye off some Batman shit. So I'm like, damn. I used to work in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is the technology hub of the world. How do I work in Silicon Valley and we don't have the basics of technology that you're going to find in South Korea, which is supposed to be an inferior country? Yeah. They retina scan my eye for me to get in. Then let me tell you something crazier. They got this little card that you can use to navigate their public transportation, which even if you don't speak Korean is so well designed that you don't need Korean because it's beautifully color coded. It's very clear. And you take this card, you use it to get on the train. And then if you choose to go get a snack at 7-Eleven, you use the same card at 7-Eleven. And anything else you'd like to do, you use the same card. It's extraordinarily easy. Life is so simple because things are well organized and most importantly, high tech. High tech. Consistently across the board. America, you don't have that. Ain't nobody getting a retina eye scan to get into their office. So... I can name so many examples like that. And, and like you got countries that are just like nobody countries like Costa Rica, how they have better roads than we have. <laughs> really? Costa Rica has nicer roads than we have. So I say that to say that the American government has been incompetent for a long time. And in fact, and it boils my blood because if you look at the last couple of theaters of war we've occupied, <laughs> where have we won? <laughs> yeah, Iraq was a hell. Where have we won? Look at what our, our spend is on warfare, on murder. We spend so much on murder and we can't even get the job done. Billions. It saddens me. You know, I'm anti-war, but if we must, l l you know, let's get some bodies. We don't even know how to do that. Hurts my heart. And, and this is not a new thing. It's been going on for a long time. I just said I, I left Vietnam. Did we win the Vietnam, oh. Vietnam War? No. No. What, 50,000 dead Americans, if I'm not mistaken? And there's so much evidence we didn't win because, you know, I go that, you know, I bring people in. They show up. They don't need a visa. I'm an American. I show up. I got to get a visa to come in this country as oh, though I'm wow. like trying to like stay and loiter in your country. Wow. American, I got to apply for a visa and pay you to be in this motherfucker when I'm the one bringing in the revenue? Damn. Wow, I didn't Stop know it. Yeah. America has been in, getting screwed up the backside because we have not had any leaders who are actually... American patriots or nationalists. America first. Every other country is their country first, except yeah. ours. Yep. Yeah. Do you think Trump is the closest that we've had to an America first president? In our lifetime? Yeah. Correct. Damn. That's a good point. Yeah. And, you know, it's you don't really realize how far behind we are or how much messed up stuff. And, and also helps you appreciate the United States, too, because we do a lot of things right when you go to these poorer countries, etc. But um, you really start to see, like, kind of like, oh, why are they doing this, but we're not doing it? Aren't we the strongest country in the world? Like, this doesn't make sense. It'll get you mad. I, you think it's the U.S. government that, that basically is the main reason that's holding us back, why we're not able to. I am certain that it's the United States government and it's the disconnect between the intelligentsia, the United States government, and the you know top percentage of Americans um, that is causing this. And it's also the fact that we have a, a diverse country. Um, so, for example... In South Korea, there it's a homogenous country, and there's tremendous levels of trust. It just Japan makes life too. easier. No crime, right? 
Like it's, right. you know, everyone is Japanese. There's no crime. Right. Uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a racist or whatever, but homogenous countries tend to have less crime. And they have a, and they're, <laughs> it's better all the way around, generally speaking. And, and actually they're the most racist. I was going to say in Japan, right? I know you don't get along with John so much, but mm -hmm. he's told me stories of like where they will literally tell him like, no, we're not serving you at this restaurant. Correct. And, and, and no one, like the racism is open. They don't give yeah. a shit. You and know? in some <laughs> cases, they don't even consider it racism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I spend a lot of time in Latvia, for example, little known country, no one ever really shows up to. Mm -hmm. And I'll hear the Latvians say things that are s most certainly racist, like mm -hmm. say things like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, we're trying to keep out like we don't want to accept any Ukrainians or we don't want to accept any such and such because, you know, the Latvians are very uh, competent, productive people and we don't want to mix our blood with anyone else. Well, look me dead in the eye and tell me we don't want to mix our blood with anyone else. And she was like, you know, and also you have to understand that certain European countries, they have the higher intelligence. They're telling me this in English. Oh, wow. They have the higher intelligence. And so if we we mix a lot with the other countries, then our country's going to go down. <laughs> this is how they're simplifying it in, in English. They're like, wow. Yeah, our country's going to go down. I'm kind of looking like, damn, that's, just, that's some quality racism right there. Mm -hmm. But to them, it's it's not racist because they don't even understand the concept of discriminating against you because you're Sudanese. Their thing is, you're not us. Yeah. yeah. You're not Latvian. Yeah. You could be Sudanese. You can be Italian, German. You're not Latvian. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Yeah. Out of everyone you've been to so far, Marquette, mm -hmm. top country for making money and then for getting girls. Ha! <laughs> Top country for making money. There are a number of destinations in which you can make money. Mm -hmm. uh, Dubai is one of them. I think it'll be harder to find good partners and good workers like in Dubai. Dubai. You know, the Emiratis are, are not very productive, and then you're dealing with a lot of foreigners, which you know it just makes business a, a lot more complex because they they belong to different nations. And you know, long story. So Dubai, you you can set up shop. Um, Kuala Lumpur is a great place, especially for people who are not like well established financially. Mm -hmm. It is a great place to set up and do business. Um, I like Poland as well. Mm, uh, yeah. They have a great... Uh, I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about Poland. Yeah, though. only Everyone good things. Everyone loves Poland. And mm -hmm. the women are legitimate. Yeah. Oh, I've seen a few here. God yes, damn, nigga. They're legitimate. And they're not very liberal. So it's one of the few places you can be in Europe, reasonably close to Western Europe, and uh, the, the women are fairly conservative. Um, I think those are three uh, you know, interesting places to do business. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you couldn't live in the United States anymore and you had to pick one country to live in, where, where would you pick right now? It'd be very difficult to pick one country. Um, Give us your top two or three then. Right now, the, I my last tour was to you know get ready for the, I have a men's trip in uh, Vietnam in 2024. So I'm taking like about 30 guys over there. You like Vietnam, gonna, huh? Um, I like some of the, the business opportunities there. Okay. You know, for some of the things that you can get done. For business to getting... Things right, and, and there also are some lovely women in Vietnam. Okay, you know, and uh, I'll tell you the rest uh, off camera. <laughs> Smaller, but, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so a couple places. If I wasn't going to live in the United States, and it's not for criminal purposes, meaning like I'm like, dang, I need to find a country in which I will not be extradited out of. Okay, gotcha. Um, if if it was like a criminal issue and I didn't want to be extradited, I'd go to Israel because Israel, even though they're our ally, they never extradite anyone. Really? No, they. they a lot of times Israel will. If you're a Jewish and you go to Israel, and you live there, they will not extradite you. You know what? No. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. There was a spy. Mm -hmm. That fled, and it took forever for them to get them. They had to do some crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's an international scammer yeah. from Spain who's yeah. just like blatantly scamming. Left Europe, went to Israel, and continued scamming. Grew yeah. a scamming business, and they wouldn't extradite him. Yeah, they won't. Wow, and they that's won't. an ethno state. Yeah, it's a homogenous ethno state. So, anyways, I mean, they care about their people. Let's, let's say that they care yeah, about their people. They do. They, yeah. they, I'll tell you this: they they put Israel first every time. Every time. Every time. No matter where they go. Yep. And, and they truly believe. Like, for example, one of the we're not going to get into it because I know you guys got like so rumble. So we need to uh, yeah, rumble. Yeah, we can, we yeah. can switch the rumble and, and talk about this uh, yeah. because anytime you talk about this, it, it becomes a, a problem. Yeah. Um, we're real quick. Um, so, but, well, besides there, what what else did you want to say? And then we can. Yeah. So rumble. if it was criminal, I'd if I was Jewish or if I could prove that I was had some Jewish in me, I would go to Israel. Yeah. If it was a criminal issue, I'd go to Israel. They take care of their own. I'll Absolutely. give them that. Absolutely. Uh, or I would go to. Really, there's nowhere else interesting to go from a criminal Venezuela. standpoint. Yeah, Venezuela. I was going to say Venezuela. You don't want to be in those terrible. places. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to be there. But if it's just for a fact of just not living in the United States, I would go to Southern Europe. I would I would touch down in Athens and, man, have a ball. 
be a okay. great place to live. Okay. Yeah, great place to live. Okay. Um, what do you foresee the future of America is if we keep going down this route? Uh, it's very dark. Increasingly, we're going to see that the wealth is going to shoot up to a very small minority of people. And, and mind you, I am a capitalist. I'm a person. I want to be in the point zero zero one percent. Uh, but we're going to see wealth sucked into that 0.001%. We're going to see a rapid decline in cult- culture and quality of people. Mm-hmm. You see, the problem is when we're talking about making America great again, we forget that we also have to make the Americans great again. Mm-hmm. So it used to be that Americans were more productive than other peoples yeah. and you know had a superior culture, work ethic, and mindset as compared to other peoples. I would not say that that is currently the case. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so increasingly we're going to see, and, and you know what, the Soviet Union actually described a strategy of cultural subversion. <laughs> they wanted to spread the hippie movement and get Americans focused on drugs, irrelevant things, become idlers, unproductive. And I think TikTok has largely achieved that. I call it a Trojan horse. Yeah. Like the country's great. You can't fight them head to head, but from within. And it's been very successful. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're borrowing money from China to pay for a war in Ukraine that is not really our own, and thereby pushing Russia and China closer together, which many analysts and even the persons within those nation states have always said America should not let this happen. If we stopped all trade with all the countries, we'd be fucked on some level. Trade has been a critical part of international capitalism, but we have to stop certain, one, we need to create certain import taxes on particular industries that are core to our national security. Uh, For example, if you're talking about the things that go into building tanks, uh, aircraft, uh, that should all be domestic, which is not actually the case. I agree. Uh, We also need to improve our presence on the African continent. They need to view us as a friend, not as a colonizer. We need to have access to the critical resources there. Uranium, coltan, things like this. China's been doing that for a very long time, building their roads for free and everything. And Russia. Yep. Farming. And and China pretends as though it's for free, but what they'll do is they'll, (laughs) nice hat, my brother. Uh, You dig? Uh, What they'll do is they'll they'll say, hey, we'll use your airport as collateral. We'll use your port as collateral. And you guys are sub-Saharan African nation, so you're always going to default because they're predatory predatory loans and you guys are idiots anyway. So when you screw it up, we're going to own this, that, and the third. And we're also going to overpopulate your country with our people. So we're going to send them over there as As well. As workers. People don't know. And they also send police too. The Caribbean is, and I didn't know this until I I came to the Miami field office, the Caribbean is filled with Chinese. Everywhere. They're all over Jamaica. They're all over the Bahamas. There's a Chinese embassy in the Bahamas, guys. Bro, I knew it was crazy Mm -hmm. when I saw an Asian guy in Barbados. That's spoke Jamaican. I was like, wait, wait, what? You will always see that. They're they everywhere. will always speak the language of the place that they are in fluently yeah. and still live in a community that is all their own. Yeah. Facts. And eventually the Chinese government also starts to create a police force in that nation that is Chinese police. You can observe this in Zambia. And when I was in Ethiopia, I noticed all their new constructions were being built by the Chinese, funded and built by the Chinese. When I was in South Africa, I noticed that they put up a sign, like a public sign, and they have it in English and then in Mandarin. I was like, oh, you ain't put that in Zulu? You ain't put that in (laughs) Nwosa? You ain't put that in Nwosa? Right? That's crazy. Like, no respect for the people who are here. Yeah. But do you expect the Chinese to respect you or do you need to respect yourself? Major problem. People don't have self-respect. That's why I have that three-sentence Bible, three-sentence Quran. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Mm -hmm. Be good to yourself, number two. A lot of people forget about that. It causes problems. They do. My granddad would always say, um, Jose shit. shit To people that are good to him. Right. Anybody else? Don't give a fuck about. Because they don't care. Yeah. I mean, I think at this point, you know, people talk shit and say China is behind, blah, blah, blah. The That's economy is going to fail or whatever. Mm. I, I mean, dude, within the next 50 years, I mean, China is a very serious, uh, you know, nemesis for the United States. Uh, they're stealing our intellectual property left and right. They're the biggest thieves of our technology. They got spies getting caught left and right here all the time. And we're what do we more, do? And we, we fucking catch and release like yeah, they're immigrants, pretty much. Huh? The Russians, too, mm-hmm. you know, because we're doing stupid trades, right, where we're giving like the merchant of death. Over for a WNBA player that smokes some weed. Right. Ridiculous, man. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it, it just it's just wild and it's uh, and it sucks because you know I'm America first all right. the time, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think a lot of our foreign policy doesn't necessarily put America first. Matter of fact, we should probably switch the rumble right now because I'm about to say <laughs> what I'm about to say. He said, switch uh, it. It's time. Yeah, it's um, time. Anything before we get, uh, switch over to you uh, from YouTube to rumble? We got anything? Uh, we should do the chats first because they were waiting. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Let me read these chats. Sorry sure. about that. Yeah, good call, Fresh. Um, I'll read these chats and then we're going to go over to rumble and we're going to talk about a certain uh, place. Um, and then a certain conflict that's going on that just broke out, what, 48 hours ago, approximately? Yeah. And it goes out here as well. Um, <laughs> IT guy from Italy here. Thanks a lot for your podcast, FNF. Love. Um, After hours fan. Yeah. It changed my dating completely. I work with a company in China, and the government banned last newer uh, version, crypto- cryptography, TLS 1.3, from all our server in the country. Sus. Yep. So they banned their basically. That's from name three countries. Yeah. Uh, Marquette's wisdom and membership has positively changed my life. The best guest that has ever been on Fresh Fit Piece of Saints, uh, Assassin or Nothing. There okay. you go. In a real way. Appreciate it. Uh, shout out to uh, the Saint Center for collab with the page on IG. We will clip the best parts of this Money oh, Monday. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. He gave a lot of game on this one. Yep. Um, we got uh, Kevin Argo is great. Guest FNF, we need the Supreme Court to allow student loan bankruptcies. Thoughts on China over leveraged real estate uh, market? Would uh, y'all invite Peter Schliff? Um, Supreme Court to allow student loan bankruptcies and then thoughts on China over leveraging real estate? That will destroy the country. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh, the bankruptcy of the student loan stuff? Yeah. And you, if you want to know if, first off, most of the governments of the world are scams. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to know if the American government is a scam, ask yourself, uh, how is it you can't go to the dentist and just, you know, they're like, hey, you know, we'll cover this. You've paid enough taxes. We'll, we'll cover this. Government will cover you know, can't have an ambulance ride. The government's like, yeah, we'll, we'll cover this. Don't worry about it. Uh, but I think, uh, what do we send, like uh, 200 million per day to Ukraine? Per day? Crazy. Damn. Uh, so if you're wondering if your government is a scam, I mean, the answer is certainly yes. And the government is borrowing money to give to a foreign entity that is not an ally. Let me let everyone know what the definition of an ally is. An ally means I can help you. But you can also help, help me. me. Mm. How could Ukraine ever help us? Can't. Good question. Damn. Beautiful women. You heard me. And I, you know, I've had some personal experience. Beautiful women. Good engineers. Miniature country with a retrograde economy. And it's been that way forever. Poorest country in Europe. And it used to be a part of uh, Russia. Anyways. Mother Russia. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the point is this. We're borrowing money. The Strategical g- placement. But we, they can't even give us that anymore. Putin took that over. <laughs> they can't even give us that anymore it, there's so much it's, it's so deep we've screwed our economy on so many levels and if we allow for defaults on student loan debt people are going to default Americans have such little integrity and a very low savings rate you mix those two things together oh damn it's a disaster and one thing I want to point out and it saddens me you look at our armed forces I wish they would clean that up. Do you know how many people go out on disability or say they got injured on the job? They've never been deployed to war. Wow. When you look at the numbers, you will be irate. Wow, we're giving this person a check every month. They've never been deployed to war. And they, they had like a, you know, a, a pulled a hamstring. They were like the petrol person. Like they, they fill up the, the gas on the tank. They don't drive the tanks. They just fill up the gas. Somehow got injured doing that. We're cutting them a check every month. Do you know how many people we have we're cutting checks to who got injured on the job? Yeah, the VA, the VA scam, a lot of people scam the VA. Yes. Yeah. And it's just they an do. example of the nature of the Americans. So if you give them the chance to default on student loan debt, we're all default. They will do it 100%. Yeah. L- listen, um, welfare. I will do it. I don't even need to. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? Because we fundamentally don't believe in our government, we call it the government. If you go to London, those psychopaths are convinced that their government is right about things. You go to Japan and South Korea, they believe the government serves them, and it does. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to say, you know, hey, if I can get over, I'm going to get over. And I'll tell you one last thing on how goofy our government is. I had a Hungarian chick, you heard me? Tall little ting, tall and slim ting. Mm -hmm. She was telling me that she got a check for uh, uh, the, what are those, the stimulus check. Oh shit! She's not even a citizen. What the fuck? Like, yo, she what? Messing, dog. She was Bro. here. What the fuck? Uh, she was here on a tourist visa. Was babysitting. And, she got a and someone truck. told her, "Hey, apply for the the stimulus." She was like, "Hey, what can they do to me? I'm not a citizen. I'll just go home if it goes bad. I like wow. Europe. I'll just go home. I don't care if I get back in. Applies for it via Cash App. Wow. And gets it. And gets it. Bruh." Wow. 
God damn, bro. Yo, shout to Europe, man. Man. She came here with a All right. gold what, mine. What else we got? Right. To um, win. Love new studio. Uh, for me, it's CJ and FNF for life. Uh, stick to the grind and you will surpass your previous super chat totals. FNF serving lives are more quite educating the masses. Yeah, actually, yep. uh, you hit up C- CJ. Ray's going to come. Um, I, I think we're going to bring him yeah. back, guys. Yeah, yeah. we're going we're gonna to bring him back. We will. And I hope you guys, like I said before, I hope you guys are liking the studio, man, and the, the new studio and the camera angles and the lighting and everything crazy. else. Because, yes. bro, literally, yes. guys, I literally, like the past two weeks have been hell for me with like building the studio, making it look really good and making sure everything is is good and you know up in the quality at the same time because we didn't just build yeah right here straight yeah straight like uh we didn't just build a new studio guys we like upgraded it while simultaneously building it so i hope you guys are really enjoying it with the new cameras and everything else like that day and night so new it increased the internet speed so many things behind the scenes man but uh give me one the chat if y'all are like this is it. the best studio ever made facts by hands yeah bro. myron Gaines. appreciate that and friend. andy um, and mo and uh else? where else do we and got Chris. here uh, Chris ain't doing nothing. Uh, Marquette <laughs> held the confidence. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Marquette ha- has a few uh, programs. programs for Marquettism.com. That guys, people in creating large uh, product-based businesses that have been paying dozens of people dividends for a while. They are basically minting money. Also, uh, his videos on finding cooper- There's one straight down too. It's at the top. It's a- oh, okay. Um, uh, on co- finding cooperative girls is top. Okay, and then uh, what else do we got here? Um. ND. Mark all the conference a few years a conference a few years ba- uh, ago. Conference three where he explained NFTs and created SAS and Coin Live. Uh, of course, he knows what it is. Check out the conference of Marquetism for proof. Anyone going to check out his presentation? There it is. And then uh, oh. ND goes. Peace to the Saints. Honored to be able to listen to the Saint and Sinners live mindset on FNF. I have personally increased my own net worth and relationships from directly knowing him and supporting the Sazen. I respect him immensely and he's changed my life. Shout out to you, my friend. W. Uh, Ty Lopez, how productive uh, bl- to black society ha- has Marquette been? Warqu- he said with W. Uh, <laughs> very productive. Can you get connected to Sazcast, Patrick, but David and Graham, Stephen, Ty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, FNF wanted to personally thank you guys. I've been making 100K for the past, for over 20 years, at 41 now. I was chasing women, but was fat now. I've lost over 150 pounds. Wow. I at the gym every day, 5.30 a.m., and now they're chasing me. Fat, depressed, and chasing not the key. Money first, okay? Um, and then we got here, Peace of Saints. I'm a poor community college for cybersecurity. I'm at a poor community college for cybersecurity. What to do to maximize my successful career? I'm going to the military for cyber, but I was diagnosed with ADHD. Will I get accepted? How to make revenue with content on media with ADHD. zero follows? ADHD. Wow. <laughs> What's That's your thoughts on that? Up. He's asking about uh, how to uh, maximize his time at school for cybersecurity. Oh, is it on me? Okay, yeah, I thought yeah, you were no, about sorry. to take that one. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. So let's reread this one. Uh, I'm at a poor community college for cybersecurity. Unless you're pursuing a certificate, your community college doesn't really matter. So True. you're probably going to need to transfer anyways. So that's number one. Number two, what to do to maximize my success with this career? It's one, to be able to define the outcome so that you can walk a focused path. So what I highly advise you to do is to identify the specific job title that you're seeking. And I'd probably talk to some professionals to figure out what that actually entails. For example, people often want to be an attorney. They think it just involves showing up at court when really it's a bunch of reading and research. Yep. So figure out what the job actually is. Once you identify the job title, then you can backwards plan to make sure that you get the appropriate education. With regards to ADHD, uh, what you're essentially suggesting to us is that you have challenges studying and focusing. Uh, for cybersecurity, this is essential. So if you find that you can't get past that, you have to do something that's appropriate for your capacity. And when you say, well, I still get accepted, well, people are accepting you based on outcomes, not based on the acronyms associated with your name. Mm. And then lastly, you write, how to make revenue with content on media with zero followers. I mean, goodness, Lord. So the reason I say that is because I feel like you're doing a bit much here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's on the schooling, my friend. Yeah. Like, don't worry about the social media crap. That's going to distract you from what you're trying to do specifically. Right. Um, question Ron from Mr. Byrne. What's your take on Gematria assigned letters with number of ciphers? No take. Okay. Fully uh, coolly. Goes, uh, peace of saints, Chinese and the, and the Jewish folk are doing it right. Can't speak for us at the U- US, UK, left or right. They're quick to eat each other. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this. They put their country first. Um, peace right. of saints, do you think it is okay to bring chocolates to a man you were trying to meet for the first time? Oh, man. I think, it's, Wait, I think can, it's hilarious. Can we address that real quick? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. That was yes. a main issue people had with you and Andrew Tate. What happened there? No kidding. Yeah, because they were like, why, why are you at the with chocolate? That's crazy. I thought it was. Hel- Did you guys actually see that stream? I thought it was hilarious. I didn't see the stream, yeah. but I, I heard clip. about it. I saw yeah, a clip. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Matt Shea did that. 
Right. Right. So you, yeah. Right. Yeah. And when Matt Shea did it, uh, Tate was basically uh, tormenting him, right? Mm. So so Tate was a tormentor. It was comedy, mm. right? And he said, if you give me the chocolates, I'll, I'll do an interview right, with you, right? Mm. But there was never going to be an interview, right? No. It's just comedy. Yeah. Right. So we mentioned the algorithm earlier. The algorithm, right? Mm. When you utilize the algorithm, what you are trying to utilize it for as a content creator is to get exposure, mm -hmm. right? So A, you want to utilize the algorithm, and I'll speak to that in a second. And then B, what is going to sell the best on the internet? What are people going to retweet? What are people going to talk about more? Negativity. Yeah. Right? The haters are going to be much better promoters than those who are fans. Your haters are going to shout it high and low. So I asked myself, I said, Marquette, being the supervillain, the evil genius, Flex Luther, <laughs> Freshly Snipes, the idol of James Bond, Attila the Hun, you're in Romania already. How much money would it cost you to associate the term the saint and the sinner with the term Andrew Tate? Why would it be good to associate your, your search term with his search term? Why would that be a good thing for a content creator? Views. He's the most searched Googled man in the world, right? Yeah. Now, there's paid reach and there's organic reach. When you utilize the algorithm, as people call it, that's organic reach. Mm. What's better, organic reach or paid reach? Organic. It's always going to be organic by far. Organic is going to get you farther and organic is going to be longer lasting. And organic is the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So a genius, an evil genius is going to say, okay, well, if I know that negativity sells more than positivity, let's take the side of the negativity. Mm. And if I know that the algorithm is critical to getting my content pushed out, who do I want to be associated with? I want to be associated with the guy who's the most Googled person on earth. And then how do I do it? And how do I get people to talk about it? In other words, be remarkable, make a remark about it. Well, piss them off, give, give them something to say. And there's a quotation that goes, nothing is more urgent than the want of something to say. You know, most people are brain dead. They don't have any ideas. So like, let's give them something to gossip about and talk about. Yeah. And so I asked myself, I was like, to get my name associated with Tate's name in the algorithm would cost a tremendous amount of money that, frankly, I don't want to invest. But, or, or a connection. Or a connection, correct. Yeah. But temporally, time-wise, when I was actually already in Bucharest, it was not the appropriate time to have an interview with him. And I knew that. But I was already there, mm. right? So I said, I'm going to put this to use. So I put it to use. Did a I think the stream is hilarious. Just side note, I, I, I laughed at it. I laughed. I thought it was very funny. <laughs> I thought it was personally. I watched it. I laughed at it. It was hilarious. Um, so I utilized that to the best effect. And I really enjoy looking at people in the comments who are like, you brought a grown man a box of candies. And I'm like, you watch the video. You add it to the watch time. You commented. You're, you're pushing it out further. And I appreciate what's called engagement. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for engaging it. Marketing, and whether your yeah. comment is negative or positive, it increases engagement. And so that, my dear friends, I call that a chess move. And that took all of probably like 45 minutes out of my day. And the most I spent for that was like about you know, 45 euro. I had my assistant with me and uh, paid for an Uber. So 45 euro, including what I was paying her. And then after that, I flew over to Yash, second largest city in Romania and uh, made sweet, passionate love to a beautiful Romanian woman. And uh, after that, I went on to the next country. <laughs> Perfect. Fair enough. Yes. Can I be honest here? Yeah, please, please. You could have done that differently, though. Talk to me. Because, I mean, bro, you went to his house. I did. I pulled up. Uh, the blacks call it pulling up, right? Yeah, you pulled. Yes, yeah. I pulled up. Like, did, okay, you, okay, for, did, you, for, did you make the introduction? For example. For example. Wait, wait, first off, first off. It, it, wait, wait, wait. Temporally. Yeah. Temporally. Yeah. Was that the right time to do that? No. It was the wrong time. Like, yeah. even with connections, right? It was the wrong time, right? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Yes and no. Okay. Let me explain. Okay. Because you could reach out to us. Right. And obviously speaking, mm -hmm. it won't happen right away, but maybe with time. If I wanted to actually do it. Yes. But but you're so you're assuming that I wanted to actually do it but rather that, than get the algorithmic association. But what's a better benefit for yourself as a creator to actually do it? But here's the reality of things. You see, I live in reality. Mm -hmm. You always have to ask yourself, especially if you're going to do a business deal, what is the benefit to the other person? What is the benefit to the other person? Never delude yourself. When you're looking at rational actors, you got the BBC trying to interview an individual. The BBC. Does that stand for British Broadcast Company? Yeah. All right. So the BBC is trying to interview him. Even if I had a million subscribers, would I rank against the BBC trying to interview him? You want to hear a joke? 
he's on interviews with people with less subs. I, sure. I, I think on, on, temporally on, at that time, uh, yeah, yeah. that was BBC time. That that was like that was his biggest, um, mm. that was his biggest opportunity. Yeah, and I'm coming out of like we have no prior relationship. It's not even a realistic thing. My goal was to get associated with the algorithm, and so rationally, you ask yourself, what is my downside? What is my upside? Mm. What is my downside? Did I lose any money? I invested forty five dollars. I wouldn't even spent that on an ad spend. I wouldn't have got that much mileage on an ad spend at forty five or euros. So what's my downside? What's my everyone has an opinion and that's fine, but I've never I never cared. Right. As a supervillain, what was my downside? Okay. No, I want you to tell me though. I'm asking you a real question, not rhetorical. See, I'm gonna give you this as a friend. Yeah. I just think personally speaking, yeah, that whole video itself yeah. and act of going to his house hurt you in the process. Connection wise. To whom? Connection wise. Yes. If I wanted the but, connection. But though. monetary wise and maybe mm -hmm. view wise, it might have helped. But I'm just saying, was that worth the cost? Absolutely. And it was calculated too. I, I know I know you were smart about yeah, it. It's always calculated. But was it worth the cost? To me, from a networking standpoint, it wasn't. So for you, and remember, like we're we're, we're radically different, we're different, different personalities, different, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So from a networking standpoint, mm. you have to ask yourself, does Marquette actually want to be networked with him? And the answer's no. No. The answer's no. Okay. And, and it was obviously no because of the action, right? Yeah. I personally don't like people showing up to my house unannounced at I, all. I was about to say. I don't like it at all. Yeah. So I knew in advance the outcome. And there are personalities that you will observe that they know the consequence and they say, absolutely, let's saddle up. You call those personalities Julius Caesar. You know them as Alexander the Great. You hear me? Mm. So I knew in advance. And whereas many people might esteem someone because they have money or they might esteem someone because they have fame. I don't esteem anyone because they have money and fame. I esteem people because they have principles, morals, and values that I respect. Okay. And you guys know what my values are. The audience knows what my values are. I was not trying to become friends and I had no intention of that. You know, in, in all respect to him and you know, we don't have any beef or anything like that, but I was not trying to become friends. See, now this makes sense because I, I couldn't wrap I understand why you would do that, but now yeah. the background story, it makes sense to me. Cool. All and right. that's why I always say checkmate because it's grand strategy. It's like, it's chess. Yeah. Like these hoes out here playing Connect Four. <laughs> these hoes are playing Connect Four out here. <laughs> like the audience is playing Connect Four, but it's like, I know they're playing Connect Four and I want them to ask themselves, well, how is it that for a long time Marquette has lived on his own terms? Yeah. See, as a man, you do what you want to do. I do, yes. I, but again, I, I mean... You're better, you're better than me because I, I, I can not do that. I right. can do that. Agree. Agree. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that I do that a lot of people couldn't do. Yeah. And that's the part I pride myself versa. on. Vice versa. Vice that versa. I wouldn't do or couldn't do. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else do we got here? Dr. Evil, WFNF, we, W. Pimp Bayless. Shout out with Discord gang. Who's Pimp Bayless? You got Pimp Bayless, <laughs> Stephen A. Pimp, oh, okay, Fresh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Flex yes, Luther. Yeah. I'm not into sports, so that's kind of like a world for me. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Zentians, much respect to FNF. Been busy trying to build two businesses I watch almost every day, especially the day show. Wisdom luck lin lingers around sages slash fools. I have learned to keep quiet to hear difference. Cool. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that, my friend. Um, Chris, what are we looking like for time? Or we, we got to... I mean, 15 minutes is fine. If you want to interview some more. But the, the, to rumble? Maybe. Yeah, so I was going to talk about the, all right, the conference. All right, all right, go ahead. It's fine. We got time? Yes, yeah, fine. All right. Uh, real quick. All right, guys. So we're going to end it there. Come on over to YouTube. Unless, did I hit all these? Yeah, do this one. Uh, sorry, I meant to say, go, come on go over to Rumble. Rumble. Yeah. Uh, Rumble.com slash Fresh Fit, guys. I just got hired by Jay Waller to create I logs. Think read I think we read that one before. Yeah. No. Pop goes. This is a different person. Is different? Oh, okay. Mm. To create logs. You what had a whole team. For me? God damn. God damn that's great, some hires. Um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you guys this, man. Um, don't run around and tell people you got hired. Yeah. That's another thing, too. Uh, like, yo, just just do your job. Like, do what you were hired to do. You know what you got to do. Like, do what you got to do, bro. You mentioned it earlier, being efficient. Your job should be, or your focus should be, how do I get it faster, smarter, more effective to Justin? That's don't, it. Boom. Don't run around name dropping him. Instead, how about you make your content so good that he name drops you when people ask? Boom. Yeah. Mm. How about that? Mm. That's He's how you guys like, do it. Wait, Justin, who does your videos? Oh, my boy, Jack. Or my pop ghosts. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Let them find you, bro. Like, the, not not the other way around, man. Yeah. So, um, all right, guys. Come on over to Rumble. Rumble.com slash Fresh Fit. Because I definitely want to get Marquette's take on uh, the current conflict that's been going on the past couple days now. Yeah. Um, which we kind of alluded to a little bit. Are we? Let me know when we're clear 